Whoa. Welcome to another week and another episode of Turning the Wheel, where the Golden Company explores the Mega Dungeon, the Mega Module that is Rapana Thuk, printed by Frog God Games. Last week, the party met a distinguished gentleman named Kavarath Longclaw as they attempted to offload uh, some particularly concerning contraband, which they had collected, and then set out after the other members of Kvarath Longclaw's group, having added them to their charter. Uh, they followed them down the coastal road and have entered the Dragon Marsh Lowlands upon rumor uh, paid for with their ill-gotten game gains that um, not only Kvarath Longclaw's friends have been taken by cultists of the Frog God, but also uh, Luminaries, the Tortle, who was once the companion of Xenon and Bobo Boomerurban, um, also is rumored to have been taken by these cultists. We left off with the group entering the Dragon Marsh Lowlands, where we now uh, pick up. Uh, group, what uh, are you thinking? The lowlands lay before you. You've been moving. It's the early afternoon, uh, but you have not come across anyone living or otherwise in the interim. Can Bane I uh, appears quite hungry, having not eaten anything all day. Who appears hungry? I'm sorry. Bane. 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Take care of that. <clears throat> Our helper, Mr. World. Can you tell me the topography of the land of where we're at? Uh, so you are in sort of a hilly area, but before you is a marsh. Um, this is punctuated by forests and hills, and in general is sort of what you would expect from a marsh. Not necessarily like the Everglades, but a marsh like. Um, the area in western Wisconsin. Okay. And with my newly sighted eyeballs, um, anything particularly sticking out? Um, let me give you, I'll give you an perception. I got a 21 perception. Uh, you look out and you see some creatures moving about the marsh, but mostly it's sort of natural animals, the types of things that you would expect uh, to be living in the marsh, um, reacting pretty normally. You know, you, you know that this place is called the Dragon Marsh Lowlands, but you don't happen to see any reason why it's called that at this time. And Obviously, with your eyes, you can see for miles and miles. Uh, and you can see um, a couple of... Uh, what appear to be either settlements or maybe camps inside the lowlands. That was my next question. Um, that's anything else particularly indicative of the cult that we have um, recently learned lives in this area? Um... No, though across um, what appears to be sort of the beginning of a river, and you can guess what river this is since there is um, a bridge uh, in the area that passes like a deep sort of river that's cut down into the world. Um, you do see smoke rising up, um, though you also see smoke rising up from deeper in the marshes. Um, that is a much messier and sort of like less well put together smoke for the settlement that, settlements that you can see thanks to your um, extremely good eyesight and the vision um, that you've been able to obtain. But you can see two regions um, where smoke is rising as if there is a settlement or people or things or some sort of group of 
individuals who are secure enough in their location to have smoke and rise above their camp. Are they in opposite directions, like one's east, one's west, or are they in like a similar? Uh, they are both west of you. One is more north and closer than the other. Okay, one's closer than the other. So the one that's more organized and put together is closer, and the more chaotic sort of broken smoke is farther away. Okay. I will relay all of my insightful information to my companions here. Mm. What do you think we should do? <clears throat> should we check out the first one and then head to the second one or just assume that the second one is where we need to go? Or I don't really know how to play this, guys. I've never uh, invaded a cult or much of anything, really. Hmm. It seems like we'd be digging ourselves perhaps into a grave if we went directly to the second one and had the first one on our six. That does make a lot of sense, Bobo. I have never encountered this kind of things living in the forest for so long. Well, Bobo, even though you weren't a soldier, you are tactically sound, so I respect your advice. What do you think we should do here? Well, in a situation like this, I say we have the upper hand and we have the initiative. So we know where they're at, and they don't know we're here. So with that in mind, I think we should uh, further investigate uh, with the most uh, stealthiest methods we can. Uh, that being animal, invisible creatures, uh, invisible people, uh, and these sort of things with elven boots and all this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. I mean, certainly we don't want to just start assaulting the first hill. Well, maybe we don't have to assault it. Maybe it's just other adventurers or something. I'm, I'm hopeful that we don't have to do anything... You know, I really am uncomfortable about what happened at Gorday's house. Uh, that's not my character sort of traits, Bobo. You know that. Uh, I don't. Well, really hey, it wasn't my idea. It was Kane's idea, and now Kane is Bane. So this is what happens to you if you come up with these wild ideas. <laughs> I, I know. I just don't particularly want to find myself in another sort of situation that could potentially tarnish the reputation of the Golden Wheel. Yeah, we're going to be known as villains. Next thing you know, there's going to be people hunting us okay, down. Let's, let's scout it out. Let's let's move up and scout it out, right? Okay, what do we got for stealth here? Because I can enable some stealth. I do not have good stealth. I am not stealthy. No. Oh, I'm, I think I'm pretty stealthy. Now, what if me and Ukin went forward invisibly... And we're then the most conservative of s scouts just to get a better idea of numbers and what type of creatures are this. Is this where the bugbears are? Well, hold, I mean, on, hold on. I mean, what's going on? How familiar? Oh, you do oh, say. Oh, 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 hold on, hold on. Different character. Oop, my bad. No, I don't. Oh, yes, I'm pretty stealthy. So, Different character. This is uh, uh, confused characters. I Sunday was month, say, month. You absolutely do not have a familiar. <laughs> no, no, I do not have a familiar. Yes, I, I know, I know. My bad. So, Brain. you guys want to go ahead and scout ahead, and uh, Veroth and I can um, kind of hang back, but we'll still kind of move forward with you. I don't, I don't really feel too comfortable. You getting too far away, Bobo. You know, with the last time we sent our invisible friends away from us you remember what happened i don't i don't want to get too far no that was just these guys went crazy i don't know what they were thinking no i promise you i will turn around and come back here so quick you won't believe it all right let's make a let's have a, a signal let's make a signal i don't know what what is that sound that birds make when they're talking to each other something like caw 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 <laughs> caw caw, caw, caw. <laughs> yeah, so if you get up there and out of sight and something happens, you just say caca, caca, and we'll know. Okay. okay. That All means right. come that means come up. All right. Okay. 
All right, is everybody okay with this party splitting? Just scout and retreat once you know. I will not fight. Good. Okay, good. Okay, Ukin, you ready? <laughs> I was born ready. My All right, come here. I'm going to turn you invisible. I walk over. Um, Guys. I, uh, I, I say, here, take this liquid. I, I, have, I, have, I have an issue. I can't get away from Bane. If Bane gets too far away from me, he kind of, I kind of lose control of him. We might have to destroy him. Bane. Or just tie him down. He can't be that strong. I mean, come on. I, I have to recast it if I go too far. It's just a waste of spell. Bane, you've been a great help. I appreciate your assistance. But I can release you into the afterlife. Can, you, can we please bury him? Yeah, sure. Um, I clap my hands together and go, hi -ya, hi -ya, hi -ya. I release you, Bane, from the barn. You finally can rest now. And you feel like a chain snaps all, um, off and he collapses. <coughs> oh, that's a shame. He lived twice and died twice, too. All right, come on. You go. I'll bury him. All right. Uh, here's the liquid. Here, drink this, Ukin. This is a potion of invisibility. And I hand Ooh, you a, I, I hand you a, I hand you a yellow vial. It's yellow. Mmm. <laughs> Sun shiny. Put the I, pork, put right before, right before <laughs> you drink it, I say, "No, I'm just kidding. That's ancient what? urine." What? The <laughs> no, no drinking it. I'm just kidding. I found that in a dungeon, and I brought it out. I oh, thought you it was a yellow joke. vial. I handed him one of the yellow vials. Yeah, Ukin 100% just drank pee. No, no, no. I Before he drinks oh, no, it, I, I him. What? No, no. Before he drinks it, I actually... Drank. I heard him coughing. He drank it. Oh, no. He I'm drank it. I'm, I'm so sorry, Ukin. Ukin, I'm sorry. Don't kill me. Don't he kill me. He not only drank pee. He drank pee that is hundreds of years old. <laughs> Ancient urine. Oh, my God. Um, oh, my God. And I'm in so fact, sorry. having Bubble. drank that pee... He now feels sick and is sickened. No, ah, he stopped grr. drinking it. He stopped him. Come on, that was part of the joke. Is I was going to stop him. It was just going to be a reminder that I held on to the pee. So I, what you I, forgot I, is that Ukin apparently trusts you absolutely and just slammed that shit. Oh, <laughs> um, Bubble, when you die, um, I'm gonna I'm gonna return you to life, and then you're gonna become my toilet. Oh my god, you guys sick. You got a sick mind, Ukin. Look at what you make me do. What is this? I mean, this is a joke, and you're talking about recreating life here. It's no way it's gonna be look, a look, here's the real potion, and I pull out the, the clear potion, <laughs> which is, this is really the potion. I thought it was blue. I was like yellow. I thought it no, was this was really the one. It's the clear potion that we got. Uh, this is the only one we have, but you know what? This is Rapanathuke, and I think we just use what we can get to get what we want. All right, go ahead. Take this one. <laughs> um, I inspect the potion. I roll for uh, um, investigate uh, Arcana on it. This is a clear a potion? It's yeah, it's the, it's the invisibility potion. Uh, uh, um, Mr. World, I rolled a 16 on my on my bottle. It said invisibility, invisibility potion. Yeah. Okay. So the I, way I mean, you guys want to take a short rest, but that's not really an issue for you right now. Um, I look so at you it. Just would, like, test it. You, like you dip a finger in, and like the tip of your finger disappears, and you're like, oh yeah, this is an invisibility potion. I drink it, like with with an eye looking at bubble. Like <laughs> how dare you? I like have smile. I fixated life. on your face. And now I'm going to turn invisible as well. Blink. And I disappear. Blink. Okay, so with the potion of invisibility drank, um, you are now both invisible for one hour. Yeah. All right, let's move. Uh, so give me stealth checks with advantage. And Ukin also has the um, elven boots. I already have advantage. Yeah, he already had advantage. So the potion of invisibility, not super helpful for Ukin, but uh, it is what it is. Oh, uh, dumb, dumb. Okay, that's the boomer nerbin part of it. <laughs> All 
right, come on, baby. It's visually helpful, yes. Oh! Xenon. Oh, I got advantage. That's right. That's right. Oh! He rolled, he rolled eight, I rolled seven. Here. The rest of you here, Ukin and Bubble Boomer and Urban, apparently relying entirely on the fact that they're invisible as they just go stomping off into the woods. You're not certain if they're intentionally hitting every stick, but it seems <laughs> to be the case. And they're also like singing as they walk. And, like they've got a really catchy tune in mind. And they're just like humming this incredibly catchy tune as they move off into the forest, mm -hmm. hitting every single bush, tripping over every stick, uh, and generally just making enough noise that it doesn't seem to matter that they're invisible. You guys know exactly where they are as they move off into the woods. Mr. World, knowing that they're leaving like that, uh, I'm going to turn around and decapitate the Bane corpse and, and look, at, look at Xenon <laughs> and say, just a, just a precaution. Yeah, we're not friends now because of that. I just want you to know. I'm very not okay with what you just Wow. Undead is undead. <laughs> and I, I point you. with the glaive to the forest and say that we should follow that. Okay, so since he's still friendly, you guys are able to defeat Kane before he goes feral and uh, gives you guys a nasty surprise by attacking you. That's what I thought. <laughs> no, he actually collapsed when I when I did the um disengage him. He just has no that more life. Sound very interesting to me, but it doesn't matter because his head's chopped off. Uh -huh. <laughs> he could probably still bite if you got too close. Arr, 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 arr. Um, and so it is about the time of day to roll for a random encounter. Um, and we are actually going to have one uh, while the um, group moves through the swamp towards the place where they're scouting out. Kvarath and our friend Xenon hear a sound behind them. turn around to see a pair of half-elves who were attempting to sneak up behind them but failed to do so, uh, having also stepped on sticks and made too much noise. <laughs> but they will now roll initiative. Swamps of sticks. Just us two? Yeah. I rolled a two. I'm 11. Okay, these two men um, rush each one of you thinking they've caught you by surprise. Um, but they have not. Um, having rolled very poorly on their stealth check, you guys both were able to passively perceive them. Um, and these guys come in wielding just short swords. And uh, one of them tries to attack each of you. Uh, they get a 13 and a 12, both of which miss both of you. Uh, and then it is Xenon's turn. Miss, Mr. World, when someone approaches within 10 feet of me, I get an opportunity attack against them. You've not gone yet, so you don't have a reaction. If, what? Um, it's an ability, I think. That's just an ability with uh, Polar Master. Yeah, but it's that you can use your reaction to hit them, yeah? Yes. We don't have one of those yet. Go, Xena. Okay. Uh, 14 and 19. Those both hit, and you chop this dude up. He's apparently very new to uh, whatever he's engaging out in these woods. Uh, he thought he had the jump on you and came in, tried to stab you, and got uh, hacked to death with your brand new battle axe, Stormbringer, for his troubles. Yep. Well, if he's dead, then that's EOT for me. Uh, and now it is Kvarath's turn. 
Wow, they didn't beat a two. Uh, <laughs> so I have two attacks. Uh, three, which is a nine, and a 15, which is a 21. And a bonus attack as well, if that doesn't kill him. Uh, let's see. He does both hit. And uh, you also cannot possibly not kill him based on your minimum damage. All right. These guys are brand new to banditry. Um, all they have on them is short swords. They don't even have armor. Um, it's they, they apparently saw you and thought that you looked like a uh, promising target if they could get the drop on you to begin their banditry careers. But uh, like many who have come to repent a thook, they ran into something much more dangerous than them. They saw a giant dragonborn and a giant lion and thought to attack. That's not a good idea. Yeah, that's a really bad idea to attack those two. They thought they had you by surprise. They were wrong. Uh, so then we move forward, and um, Bobo, Boominerbent, and Ukin um, moving up uh, through the woods. Um, you guys yeah, know that, that, that. you guys know you're making a lot of noise. You're not that, being that, particularly. That, that. You're not being Here particularly silent. Yeah, you're yeah, aware yeah. of this. You guys are feeding into each other's nonsense as you hum at each other. Uh -huh. You know what your job is, but are we there yet? Almost. Eventually, you do move up, and you see ahead of you um, on a desolate ridge, sort of on the edge of the swamp. Uh, you see a um, set of standing stones on top of the hill, which has been thrown to the ground. Um, you also see a pair of buildings, um, one of which is on the edge of the swamp where it is wet enough that there is a dock, and the other of which is closer, um, but which is... Uh, All right, Ukin, we do not that. want... I think we need to just stay in this position right here and just observe for a few minutes and then make our way back. And I think at that point we have uh, our mission complete. I say, oh, hold on, where are you? I, I kind of look for your bull head and point, pointy ears. Oh, oh, there you are. Okay, yeah, okay, got it. Well, yeah, we got to keep humming so we don't lose track of each other and start bumping into each other. You know? I just want to make sure. <laughs> Okay, so I'm thinking, uh, okay, Mr. World, I think we're just going to observe here from our silent positions in the bushes that we don't move any sticks whatsoever. Uh, occasionally, you see uh, some people who are wearing green robes walk back and forth between the buildings. Do they look armed and dangerous? Give me a perception check. Oh, okay, this is not my strong suit. Uh, is anything my strong suit? Six. Uh, you cannot tell. In fact, you're not even certain if those robes are green. They might be gray. Uh, gray or green. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing a wonderful job. I think we get back. Mm hmm Get back? Uh yeah. Th okay. There's, all, there's all we see. All right, let's oh, get back. We can't okay. go for we go forward, we're gonna get in a fight, we're gonna blow our mission, and they're gonna never let us do this again. Yeah. I remember I kind of failed not so great going through the building and got so <laughs> and someone <laughs> got killed. <laughs> but he was he lived a second life. Yeah, and he helped a lot, to be honest. Yeah. Okay. We stumble all the way back. Did those bandits have bows on them, or was it just their swords? I couldn't tell. Mr. World? Hmm? Oh, there it is. What was that? 
I asked if the two bandits that had attacked us had swords and bows or just swords? Just short swords. Okay. And these appear to be very cheaply made short swords. Like yeah. I said, evaluating them, you're quite clear these might be the dumbest bandits you've ever seen. Seen some pretty dumb bandits. Well, I mean, uh, Mr. World, do we make it back to the, our companions? Let's see. Do we need to roll stealth? Uh, yes, but also you didn't roll a random encounter, so yes, you make it back. Okay. All right, we relay the information to Longclaw and to Xenon. And uh, my opinion is, I mean, either we just go in there and just start killing them all, uh, or, I mean, I mean, these guys don't concern me that much uh, in, on my six because they're so weak. From what I'm seeing here, these ones that you chopped down, uh, I mean, these are some weaklings. Did uh, you happen to see a good <clears throat> vantage point that maybe I could get a good layout of the camp if I was to make it into it? Uh, I immediately start sketching a little map in the mud. And in his, in his map of the mud, Mr. World, is there a spot of where they were that would be a good vantage point to kind of get a layout of the area ahead of us? Uh, no, this isn't a particularly hot high um, hill here. Like I said, like the buildings are right up against the marsh. And here the marsh uh, is very wet in the area where you can like put a boat in and like canoe around in this area of the marsh. Yeah, there's a dock. Uh, there's standing stones that have been knocked um, down. There were, but they've definitely been knocked down. They're, the people who are here are not about giving those ancient deities any sort of veneration. Uh, Mr. World, from my ancient history uh, perception uh, or uh, perceptivity uh, proclivities, can I see if these uh, I recognize any of the symbols on the standing stones? Uh, you can roll a history check. All right, history. I rolled a twenty-five Arcana, uh, fourteen uh, history. So the so these standing stones are sort of indicative of a very ancient religious uh, group that predates the Temple of Orcus, predates Rupanathuk. Um, the people here um, who had these standing stones it would have belonged to some sort of ancient religion whose followers really don't exist yet um, and probably do, are not able to exert a great amount of influence on the world. Nonetheless, these cultists toss that shit out. I wonder if there's something significant with these particular areas that perhaps the ancients found some secret magic or secret source of power here. Where are we in relativity to the actual dungeon of Rapanathuk itself? Um, you know that the actual dungeon of Rapanathuk itself, the entrance that you left and didn't go in, um, is pretty far to the east. Uh, you also know that you're pretty far north of the Mouth of Doom, which is where you had previously entered Rapanathuk. I was just curious if the religious symbols had any direct correlation to the clerics of uh, Rapanathuk and their previous religious order. Um, so you know that the clerics of Rapanathuk, um, Rapanathuk was created by clerics of Orcus. Okay. Mm. Uh, Predating them even. And so the cl healing clerics whose like area you had gone through uh, would have predated that group um, or postdated that group and would have like secured an area. You're unsure. You 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 don't know um, really what happened to the the. Uh, order of healers. Um, but you do know that um, it wasn't these good. types of gods were much less organized in how they were worshipped than the healing gods whose turf um, was poisoned and infected that you went through. The plague pits. 
Correct. The plague pits. Yeah, that place was awful. I have a detailed map of the plague pits. I'm going to sell it for some a vast amount of money someday. Oh, yeah. Adventurers who want to go down there and want some... You know what, Bobo? Maybe that's our purpose. Not to uh, take the treasure from Rapan, but simply to explore it and map it for other adventurers. Maybe that's our purpose. Who knows? What if we return periodically with hordes of undead that Ukin could create and restock the dungeon for a training session in order to become a better adventurer? Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I, can only, just, I can only make one friend, not 20. Jesus. What if we uh, just well. become masters of this dungeon in our own right? Yeah. Look, I, once Frogger's dead, I think anything's possible. Oh, that Frogger does pay the problem. And isn't it weird that this frog cult is here and my brother Frogger is so damn dangerous, it's such a problem? You know, I had thought about that. I just didn't want to be that guy. Yeah. We don't want the god we don't want the gods to hear us thinking out loud like this, maybe. Yeah, I don't know. Bobo. Did yes, you see? Any frog iconography? I did not, but they were wearing some weird robes. And like, it's like these two, the bodies here, these two uh, dead bodies here, uh, these corpses, um, it, they are kind of dressed like them, I think. I mean, what are these guys thinking to attack you? I mean, is this what happened? I mean, what the heck? Are these guys going to do to you? <laughs> are they dressed similarly, Mr. World? The people that um, Bobo and Ukin saw and the ones that attacked us? No. The people you saw are just dressed in, like, clothes. The, okay. Like, ordinary, like, people clothes. Like, you're not really certain why these people decided to take up banditry, but they clearly did. Well, these, uh, yeah, I mean, they kind of look like these guys, the ones I saw in the... Uh, and that little area over there with the docks. I mean, what do you think we should do? These dead fools should not concern us if these cultists have Umbra. We should assault. If you two can be stealthy and hide, I think Xenon and myself can approach. And if they attack, we attack. If they do not attack, we can communicate. Yeah, that sounds good. So I can hide somewhere. And then, if it's safe, I can come out. And perhaps sneak, sneak attack? Whatever you people do. I bring the very power of the most powerful magic known to the world and the underworld. Yes, I will follow this plan. Let's let's do it. Let's go. Um, how long? We still have. Do we still have our invisibility up, Mister World? No, it's done. Okay. Wah, wah, wah. Okay. We could try to stealth. It probably won't go well. But maybe if Xenon with her glasses can see a little closer, we can get a better idea. Yeah, that was my hope that we could get a better uh, scouting on it once we got closer to kind of see if we could see what we were working with, really. I meant to borrow the glasses from you when I went up and did my perception check. Yeah. All right, so let's roll our stealth checks and try to sneak up on them. If that doesn't work, then you know we're on the plan. Oh, yeah. Yeah. With, with disadvantage, I rolled a two. I, I disappear into the forest like a shadow in the night with my 20. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm 
clanking and thumping through this marsh. <laughs> Okay, so you guys as a collective group are able to be to pretty stealthily move along the edge of the Dragon Marsh Lowlands and uh, uh, reach Mr. World. The... Mr. World, I'm sorry. Before mm -hmm. I continue, I, I, I don't want to interrupt you. I'm sorry. But I cast Disguise Self, and I am going to take the form of a young human child with gray robes on. Okay. Like a 12 year old, the size of a gnome. Okay. Okay. Uh, so you um, guys see Bobo. He uh, wraps himself in an illusion um, to disguise who he is as you guys move up uh, stealthily and reach the um, edge of the area. And as you reach of the area, uh, Ukin attuned to sort of the primal forces of the region um, Ooh, begins to feel sort of uneasy. The area here is unhol is um, what's the term? Desecrated? Unholy? It is despoiled? Uh, it is hallowed. H a l l o. Oh, ho oh the hollow. Oh, the opposite of where I come from. Oh. <laughs> I think it might be the pee talking or it might be how I'm feeling <laughs> right now. But I think I, this this is not great. This is not good, guys. Um I I don't feel I don't feel well in this area. Um but th uh, this this might help us in the future. I give everybody two good berries. I pull, I pull my hand out, and good berries appear in my hand. I get, I get everybody two. I'll have four left for myself. Thank you. Thank okay, you. it's the emergency. It's, you know, we can always use some. Two, two points is better than nothing. And plus, it can bring somebody back from the dead. Mm -hmm. Before, so we we don't you know go down or anything. Yep. <laughs> Guys, you know, thread carefully. Can we see the camp yet? Or more importantly, can yes. you not get to see the camp? Um, yes, you guys have no problem sneaking up um, to the edge of the camp um, where it opens up and is no longer in trees. Um, but I mean, you just see the people, like every now and then you see people move between the buildings. Obviously, nobody has noticed you yet. We should just sit here and observe them. We might get a clue as to where your friend is, where Umbra is, uh, by them bringing food, or perhaps we can even listen in on their conversations if we're quiet enough. We, it's an amazingly lucky that we were able to stealth up into this point as such far as we've come. <laughs> um, and so, um, well, I guess you guys haven't met him, but Kvarath, you also feel this like unease settle into your skin as you move into the area. Um, what does what does it feel like? Uh, you feel um, as if you are sort of the opposite of blessed, as if the land itself is sort of like cursing you. Uh, and weakening you slightly in that this is a hallowed effect in this area. Ukin knows what that is, you know, being a druid and understanding that there are areas of the world um, that for one reason or another are so evil that they weaken good. Um, and, you know, if you ask him, I'm sure he can roll. But the hair is a stand up in the back of my neck. I'm going to ready my yeah. crossbow uh, and aim it and motion for the others to prepare. I, I see you feel it too. The own instantness of this land. The ground looks like it's dying. 
and the spirits are leaving this place. They're all running away. I don't I don't feel like it's a great idea to go in here. Kind of an adamant about it. What are, what are you guys talking about over here? We got a great position here. You 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 get these uh you let this the hair stand up on the back of your neck. I mean, come on, we were dealing I've uh, dealt with demons before. This is nothing compared to the plague pits. I mean, you can drink the water here. I don't recommend that. I I silently cast mold earth on the under me. You can see the ground. It doesn't look normal. Huh. I mean, what do you guys want to do? Do you want to get... I mean, it seems like maybe we should check out the second uh, area then. I, I, I don't know, but I don't... You guys, as you're standing here looking, you do see like several other these rogue figures moving back and forth. Uh, someone wants to roll an insight check to sort of evaluate what their behavior reminds you of. I don't have a good insight. Does somebody have a good insight? Oh, who can who, does? Who, who I can, is uh, world, Can I, can I uh, aid him? Yeah, you guys are all looking at it, so you can all roll. It could be a group check. Okay. I, I rolled a 15. I got 15. I, I, I'm aiming my cross with the nearest person I see. I have 11 plus guidance. That should be rolling this. I don't know why. I uh, rolled a 14 total. Uh, Xenon and... Mr. Boomer Nervin. I got a 15. All right. So that is more uh, successes than failures. So that is a pass. This looks like, as near as you can tell from where you're sitting, this looks like an ordinary, peaceful, religious settlement. That's what they all look like. Well, there's something mysterious under this va fake veil. Yeah, they're up to something. What kind, there's two buildings, Mr. World? Yes. That's where they're up to something, inside them buildings. That's where we're going to find your friend Umbra. And the turtle. Unless there are no objections, pick a target <laughs> and prepare to fire. Now wait, this is my one last thing before we do the full... The <laughs> The full assault, okay? Here's my idea, my last idea. We get one of them. We get one of them, you know? Info. We get one of them, we bring them back quietly. Maybe we wait for nighttime, and we bring them back here, and we, uh, we have a little talk with them. We find out if there is our friends are in here or not, if the turtle's here or not. And uh, if if it turns out they're just nice uh, people, then we can let them go and just uh, let them go, or 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 kill them, reanimate them, and then send them in. Well, that's that's another option if they uh, cross us. Ugh. If you can get one without raising an alarm. More information is a good idea. I don't know if I'm I'm built for that, man. You know, yeah, I mean, we need a grapple and and restraint to his mouth. I mean, I, and I don't think, yeah, I don't know. I don't want to split up again. I'm afraid somebody's going to get captured by these guys, and then there are going to be three of us in the prison. I mean, if we all go in and get one. Is there any chance in hell we're going to get out of the place without them detecting us? I doubt it. Hmm. So what's our option? We're talking, we could capture one, we could do a full assault, or we could just enter the town and start talking like 
and just see what's going on and find out what's happening. Uh, uh, or like maybe Xenon and Longclaw go in to talk. And then if the talking doesn't go too good, uh, we start killing them. I do like that idea. So, Ukin, you mm -hmm. feel this place is evil? I, f I feel I feel it in, into my bones. The you have, why would they be here? Kvarath, you can feel the evil in your bones as well. Yes, why would I, they be I here unless thought. they were evil? Right? They, but it's two buildings and some standing stones. They don't and, look like they're doing anything. They look like might have been vineyards at one point. But are now, what, decrepit? And o overgrown, overgrown bushes in rows, basically. Can't even keep the vegetables growing. I mean, come on, guys. So either they're a peaceful village out in the middle of this dangerous wilderness, or they're a group of dangerous cultists who ransacked this small vineyard and are yeah. taken over. Yeah, be, either come way, on. they're going to die. Maybe. It sounds like they have to die. I don't really see the need in killing innocent people if they've not done anything wrong. Uh, come but, on, Xenon. They're yeah, sitting they're, on top of an evil center, a center of evil power. Well, it, they could be people that uh, are affected by the cult that's out here. We don't know. You're right. Once you, you Look, I mean, I think we're taking the most peaceful path forward here. You guys are going to talk to them. And if that doesn't work, we're going to get a whole bunch of uh, heads on our shoulders. Well, I'm not a really good uh, negotiator. Pharaoh kind of did that for us, but sure. Well, I do like that idea. If if us walk, we walk out there with you two hidden, prepared to strike. If they yep. attack us right away, our options go down to one. Umbra should be the priority, finding him. And if they yes. attack us, we know at least. It's a group of bad guys. If they want to talk, we can talk and hopefully find out more information and then leave peacefully if he's not here. We're giving them the choice. Giving them the choice. I like it. Do you okay. agree? I totally agree. We're not stealthy anyways. We get one one sneak attack or whatever the elf calls it. And that's it. And then there is no more options. So at least we give them the initiative of choosing violence or choosing peace. All right, well, I'm going. Alex, to... you lost. Yeah, I I'm going to um, find the most stealthiest uh, cover position I can find. I'm actually going to, if I can, very quietly get into like almost like a dugout position. Or I can climb the building from the back. And you can hold on to me, and we can get on the roof. Oh, uh, that sounds like we're going to get a stealth check, which I don't want to fail. It's like walking for me. Why don't you do that, and I'll stay here? <laughs> you have a pretty good chance of making it, because you got the boots and all that stuff. Well, he can spider climb, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Like, like normal, like walking. And you're a small child sized boy, so you could probably. No, I don't like getting carried around like I'm some kind of human baby or something. <laughs> Get in my backpack. Uh, next thing you know, your undead's going to be carrying me around. I mean, come on. Cool. That you could be cool, though. Like, like a mount? Like a mount. Yeah, that wouldn't be bad. <laughs> All right, I suppose we should get to it then. All, All right. right, great. I think it's a great plan, guys. All right, I'll be waiting. If Let's any go. one of these fools is still, oh my gosh, I'm going to just blow to pieces. Well, you know the signal. You know the signal. Caw, caw, caw. <laughs> Look, if you can line them up in a long line, okay? If they start fronting, line them up in a long yeah. line. You know and what? I'll hit, and I'll, I'll hit them with a the lightning bolt. I'll do that. If they just. Me, can you stand here, 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 oh, here, here, and here? Excuse me. Pardon me. Stand in a straight line. Thank you. <laughs> He's been determined to be evil. Yeah, you could call me Sister Mary Zenon while I deliver a holy ass whooping unto thee with my ruler, aka Stormbringer. All wow, right. let's start walking. <laughs> okay, <laughs> well, I'm in position. Yeah. Position, hey, give me a stealth check, Bobo. 
<laughs> Come on, baby. Yeah! Damn! Okay, you guys see Bobo be the sneakiest he has ever been in a rare moment of focus, uh, the likes of which you have never seen from the illusionist. As he stealths off into the woods, uh, moving amongst the vines, and unfortunately, as he moves near a vine, we're going to roll initiative. Oh, God. Oh. With just Bobo until... Uh, you guys see this. So Bobo, uh, one of the vines that you move past attempting to sneak. Um, begins to stir as you move past as if it can sense the living near it and it hates the living. Mm. This place is a hell. Okay, I roll a 17, Mr. World, for initiative. Okay, I am getting to the... You're getting to page 475 of 1,750? Uh, no. So you see what had appeared before just now um, to be a normal plant. Uh, however, as you move near it, um, the plant stirs and wrapping and shooting out of what you thought was an overgrown wine bush is a wicked vine um, which attempts to wrap itself around you. Uh, does an 18 hit you? Uh, as a reaction, I can cast shield. Oh, you do not have a reaction yet. Huh? Because, you, again, you have not gone yet. Okay. Doesn't your reaction trigger on your turn if you're being attacked? Yeah, that's when that's something, somebody does something no, to you. But you have to have gone, so you ha have a reaction. We covered this before. Right. Which is not part of the rules, but okay, whatever. All right. Uh, no, that's a hit. Okay, you um, find yourself hit by a the vine, the spikes of which on the vine uh, deal eight bludgeoning damage to you, and then you are grappled by the vine. Okay. Uh, and the rest of you see Bobo lifted up into the air inside what was once the uh, vineyard. Was I nice and quiet while I while that happened to me? Uh, no, nope, but it is now your turn. All right, so I'm grappled. Uh, that's not gonna yes. uh, that would destroy me, wouldn't it? Uh, at the start of your turn, uh, you feel poison pumping out of this vein. This uh, And it does 12 poison damage to you. All right. Uh... Oh, boy. Okay. Uh... I... 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 Verbal somatic. Um, can I cast a s somatic spell while in uh, in entrapped? Mister World. 
Um, you are grappled, so um, can't wave. Use a restrained condition. So I can't do uh, cast any spells. Uh, when you right are now. restrained, uh, you your speed is zero. You your attack rolls have disadvantage, and you have disadvantage on dexterity saving throws. It does not say that you cannot cast spells. All right. Okay. This is my big chance. This is my only chance. All right. I cast enlarge, and you hear this sound. It sounds like this. And I, I become very large. I become like a big, big human. I'm almost as big as a big human. Okay, so you cast enlarge, so that would now give you advantage on uh, your check to break. That's right. Now this this is also a large plant, actually, so it doesn't. So you do not gain that advantage. You're not bigger than he is. It says I have advantage on strength checks and strength saving. There you go. So then, yes, you will have advantage on your strength check if you are using athletics to break the grapple. Uh, Okay, here it is. Athletics. Advantage. Two. And then advantage. And then a 20. Uh, So you break free of the assassin vines uh, constriction. Okay. And, uh, and that is your action. That's my action. Yep. <sighs> okay. Okay. That's the end of my turn. Okay, so now we're going to have everybody roll initiative because they saw the vines grab him as well. Ten, Kirk, four, far rough. You say you got a ten? Yes. Six on my part. I have a 21. So a uh, twenty one for Xenon. Uh, what did you get? Uh, Ukin? Six. Fantastic. Four plus two. Okay, so uh, first up in this round is Xenon. Did we alert everybody in here? Yeah, that was my question. Like, what is there other than the giant plant that has a hold of Bobo? Giant Bobo. And giant Bobo, yeah. Giant Bobo. <laughs> yes. <Yeah, it's> awesome. <clears throat> Well, actually, I'm now I'm just the size of a, a dude. Yeah, a regular size Bobo. Right. What is there other than that plant? Like, are there people around? Like, what else is there in our area? Yeah, have they noticed me struggling with the plant? 
Um, yes. So the people are like in their various buildings. Um, all the only people that appear to have noticed that Bobo is struggling with the plant are Xenon, Vareth, and Ukin. Twelve, twenty-two, and fifteen to hit the plant. How many of those hit? Twelve, twenty-two, and fifteen. Two of them. Twenty damage. And that's EOT for me. Okay, uh, you see around you Bobo and um, Xenon, the otherwise normal bushes of the vineyard begin to animate and twist and attempt to wrap themselves around you, and I need you both to make strength saving throws. What are your results on your strength saving throws, guys? Xenon, what'd you get? Okay, I see Xenon in um, the D&D Beyond Roller got a 12. So I couldn't hear you when you answered. I don't think you unmuted. But you are wrapped up in blanches and you are now restrained um, by the animated plants that surround you. What did you get, Bobo? And remember, you have advantage on this check from your enlarged spell. Oh, I had already dis um, disengaged. Yeah, but this is a new attack against you. Oh, it hit me? This is an area effect. This is It has like the natural ability to cast an entangle spell. Oh, but I saved the last time. Yeah, but this is a new thing. Okay. Uh, so I have an advantage. Yep, on a strength saving throw. Oh! I got a 19. Okay, so uh, thanks to your improved size, you are able to um, avoid getting wrapped up. Oh, yeah. Now I'm going to save everybody. It's time for me to save everybody. Okay, uh, after the plant's turn, it is Bobo's turn. Okay, plant. I just want to let you know, I am from a higher phylum than you. I am from a higher family of creatures than you are. And I levitate off the ground very high, very quickly. And it makes a sound just like that. And now I'm up in the air, and I cast Firebolt on the plant. Ah, oh, come on. 13? Uh, 13 does hit the plant. Yeah, yeah. All right, fire. Plants hate fire. 16 points. And so you would expect that plants hit, hate fire. But this, this one. Uh, <laughs> Appears to be resistant to the fire damage which you have thrown at it. What? Okay, I see how it's going to be. That's what I say. Something, End of turn. About, something about the foul energy that has animated this plant has also made it resistant to fire. Which is, I, you know, great in terms of like genetic engineering, 
not so great for people who are using fire to fight it. Right. It's uh, a genetic Paris. engineer behind all this. All right, next. It's Varith's turn. Varoth, sir. Varoth. Uh, uh, is the, the stuff in Tangling Xenon, is that an enemy to attack, or is that just a spell? Um, Game-wise. What? It's like, is she magically so is, restrained, or is it an enemy that's spell? Well, so he has basically put up an entangling, an entangle spell around itself but it's not so much magic in terms of like I cast this spell so much as that it is a magic plant that is able to animate plants near it. Ooh. So what's the distance to get to the main plant? Um, so Bobo moved one turn before he ran into this. So you would have to move. Um, and then when you enter it, you would have to make a saving throw as well. Or no, it's just when it begins. So it's, will not affect you because so basically like lurches it grabs and then the plants are not like constantly animated so it's slightly worse than the entangle spell so the plants are no longer like writhing but you did see them leap up around and grab xenon so i can run up to within 10 feet of this plant and hit it without getting a check that's what you're saying Mr. World. Uh, you can move up. You don't have to make a check. Yes. Cool. We'll do that. We'll take a couple swings at this plant here. Ooh, I got a 20 and a 11 to hit for my two attacks. Uh, the 20 hits, the 11 does not. It's a dirty 20, not a natural 20, just for the record. Uh, and ooh, we got a grand total of five damage. Uh, and I'll do, I have a bonus attack to hit with the butt of my glaive uh, for a 14 to hit. A 14 does hit. Nice. And a nice little four extra damage on that plant. Nice. And that should, that should be it for me. Uh, Ukin, it is now your turn. I am going to use my ability I haven't used it forever. I am going to go in wild shape into my spore ability, symbiotic entity. Okay. As I, as I take out my hood, you can see spores sprouting out of my head, and my body just kind of morph more greenish. And. Ew. Oh, hold on. I have. To, sorry. Let me do something before that. I, I let me apologize. I yeah. cast. Um. Um. Before I do it, I have to cast Flame Blade. I cast Flame Blade first before okay. doing that. Yes, I cast Flame Blade on my hands. I see nothing in either in this particular wild shape that would take away your ability to cast spells. Just in case, so I don't think it matters which order you do it in. This is this is just like you getting infused by spores. Okay. okay, I can do both because flame blade is a bonus action. Yeah, and so I'm saying is that you did it didn't matter which order you did it in. Okay, yeah, I cast flame blade and I shave into my form, getting twenty him temporary hit points and growing spores and greenish and one with nature. Yeah, so you see him like, like some sort of plants or something inside him sort of grows and bulks him up and makes him look more powerful. You guys haven't seen your friend Ukun do this before. Mostly you've seen him summon like various rats and things, but now you see something inside him grow, making him larger. Um, and then he summons a burning sword into his hand. Uh, and then do you move forward or do you stay where you are? I'm going to move forward. And I want to be at least 10 feet from the plant. Okay. Okay. And the plan is to make a con save 14 against my hello spores. Uh, it did not succeed. 
and he gets seven points of necrotic damage. Okay. How many? Seven. Okay. Uh, Zena. Yeah, I'm still stuck. Um, yeah, I guess I didn't see what you rolled to escape. What did you roll? Eleven. An eleven does not escape from this attack. All right, that's it. Okay, now it is the plant's turn. Um, it is going to uh, sense the other giant, powerful plant coming towards it, uh, and that will lash out with uh, its main attack vine uh, and attempt to wrap itself around Ukin. Does a 16 hit you in this form? No. Okay. So uh, you see this long, it's at least, you know, it might be a 30 foot long sort of like snake-like vine. Reach out and attempt to wrap itself around Ukin. It bounces off of his shield um, and is unable to, to find purchase and it is then Bobo's turn. All right, so Xenon's been grappled up by this horrible thing. Uh, it, Xenon is wrapped up by different bushes that have like sprung up from the ground. They tried to wrap you and Xenon up. They caught Xenon because she was um, caught by more surprise than Bobo being familiar with the principles mm -hmm. of trickery was. Uh, also, because you were enlarged, you were able to avoid it. And you said your enlarge is over. Why is your enlarge over? Yeah, because when I started levitating, I shrunk down. Oh, that's what you levitated. And it sounded like this. Woo! <laughs> so right. you are now levitating above the front as yes. you ordinarily are. Yeah. Staying out of hand to hand. Okay, so I, I, I go up another 20 feet just to, or yeah, 20 feet just to make sure I'm not going to be touched. And then I'm going to spray some acid onto the one that is uh, grappling my good friend Xenon. Uh, DC 14 dex save. Okay. DC 14 dexterity save for a plant. I missed. Good. Or it um, failed. I'm spraying um, Roundup on that mug. <laughs> but I'm giving Xenon cancer at the same time. All right, there's seven. Seven acid. Okay. <laughs> End of turn. Uh, it is then v Varoth's turn. Just over here pruning some hedges, taking a couple more attacks. Uh, we'll go for a uh, 22 and a 21. Nice. Uh -huh. and that's two hit. So that should be a 10 and then ooh, a 13. So 23 damage. Getting some numbers here. And then we'll do the bonus action butt attack for a 24 to hit. Or excuse hit. me, 22. But yes, it hits. And that's just a d4. Plus three, so we got another four damage. And that's uh, uh, all I'm good for is cutting vines. Ukin, it is now your turn. Blazing hands, flaming out of my hands, coming out. I am going to slash at this thing. I'm going to take my dice out because I have dice for the fun of it. Does a 17 hit? Yes. And so I am going to do my fire damage plus my halo spores damage plus my um, symbiotic damage. So it's plus this, plus this, plus that. <laughs> so it's a 12 fire. Six, six, nine, twelve necrotic. Okay, you feel, um, 
your blow and the sort of dark power of the plants inside you uh, dealing damage to this plant um, at a far greater rate than the fire. Again, you notice that the fire here is apparently resisted by whatever um, has awakened this plant. Uh, however, the, the dark magic that is also part of you um, is doing regular damage to this plant. All right. But the plant uh, is still moving, albeit weakly, uh, as it shifts to Xenon's turn. Hacking away at the plant. All right, 23 gets me out. <clears throat> it does indeed. And I believe that's uh, my action economy. It is. Uh, so then this plant now, um, panicked and worried that it will not survive, uh, attempts to wrap itself around this terrifying plant creature before it uh, and got a 23 to hit this time. Does that hit you? <laughs> I don't know what this platform does. Uh, it does seven bludgeoning damage to you, and you are grappled. Sorry, what's the damage? Seven. Seven, okay. Does anything bad happen to it when it hits you? Uh, no. Uh, it did start its turn there, so I think it has to make a constitution saving throw against your shit, right? Because of your halo, of course. I use all, all of it that, uh, in, in the, my same turn. Um, but I, so I'm reading your Halo Spores ability. So as a reaction, uh, you can use your reaction to deal 1d4 necrotic damage to one creature you can see when it moves into a space within 10 feet of you or starts its turn there. So you can do it again. Ooh. Uh, Would you like it to make a constitution saving throw? Yes, please. Uh, unfortunately, it did pass it, so we read your rules and learned shit for nothing. It's okay. <laughs> There's so many yeah. things to do. It's, it's like algebra. Much. We learned shit for nothing. It's too much stuff in this creature I never used before. Yeah. Um, okay. But you are uh, wrapped up by this plant as it attempts to wrap itself around your neck and strangle the life out of you. But it is then Bobo's turn. Have a little spritz of this, baby. And I spritz some more acid down upon it. Okay. Uke, dexterity. You also need to make a dexterity saving throw. Yours is with advantage because you're tied up. Disadvantage because you're tied up. Acid splash is an area spell. So what's your save being a result, Ukin? Oh, wait a minute. Mr. World says choose one or two creatures you can see within range. Oh, it's not an area spell. I thought no, it was. No. Okay, so it's just choosing targets. They try to dodge it. Yep. Okay, so I assume you don't choose Ukin. No. Okay. <laughs> Let me there live. I'm a team player. Okay, how much acid damage do you do? Six. Uh, your roundup successfully uh, causes the plant to stop being animated uh, and to go silent. I'm and sorry, you could, you might have gotten cancer from that, but <laughs> at least the plant's dead. <laughs> Raw, where's the other one? Stab, stab. <laughs> I'm going to frenzy. I didn't know it'd be gardeners today. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm just floating above the battlefield. I actually, while I'm up here, I'm going to look into the town. Uh, you see two intact buildings. There's only two buildings. It's not so much a town as like uh, a building that has the dock right outside of it, um, and then a boat that, and then a building slightly to the north of that that does not have a dock outside of it. The buildings are otherwise very similar. Are they stone buildings, wooden buildings, yes, they're mud? Both stone buildings. Do they look like a prison? Uh, they look sturdy. Okay. You know, like, like any building you would expect um, people to sort of cluster around in um, the wilderness around Rapanathu. Are they multiple stories or one story buildings? Uh, you see one story. Okay. All right. I'm just hovering. Though there are towers, um, uh. 
on the corners of the buildings. Okay, I'm keeping an eye out just in case I need to put up my shield as a reaction, just in case somebody tries to shoot a crossbow at me. Back like to the plan, the, the towers are on the southern building, not the northern building. Um, the building that has the dock outside of it has a tower on each corner. Yeah, that's the big boy building right there, guys. That's where... That's where they're at. And we're talking about going back to the plan. Back to the plan. Nobody's hurt. Not that much. Motioning towards Ukin's giant I'm, furry thing. I'm just going to keep hovering over here, and uh, I am actually pretty badly hurt. Uh, I'm oh, going to eat. Fine. I'm going to eat both my good berries. Okay, so that gives you, I think, two hit points. Yep. I tell him I have more if he needs more. Hey, Bobo, I got three more. You want to fly by and grab these? I can't fly. I can go down and come back up or something. All right, I I, I go down really quick, and uh, who can jumps up? It's like a slam dunk. Okay. Yeah. All right, I take three good berries from you. Yep, and I'll have one left. Um, Bobo, you. you when you think about it and you remember, you actually didn't see anybody go into the uh, building with the towers. Like the people would come out and like do stuff in the garden or whatever, or move and you know look at the lake, or just like do sort of like ordinary people who are bored out in the wilderness things. Okay. But nobody went into the southern building. Okay. The one with the towers and the dock. Yeah, nobody. You didn't see anybody go into that building. All right, I'm mapping all this in my mind right now. All right, so I come back down. I hover. I hover like ten feet off the ground. And I start having a conversation with the party. So we're gonna go back to the. Go go back to the plan, guys, and uh, I'm gonna hover out here. I'm gonna cover you with my my blast of magic. And uh, we're going to continue with the plan because we still haven't even had a chance to talk to these folks. And avoid dangerous plants this time. Yes. Are we ready? Let's go. Okay, Let's so go. So are you guys headed to the north side or the south side of this other building? I think you guys should avoid the big building with the towers at, at least to start with, if you could avoid it. Yeah, as uh, far as the plan goes, Ina and I are approaching the nearest person we can with a hand raised to say hello and see if they're hostile or not. If they are, we attack. If they're not, we talk. Okay, as you guys walk yeah. up to um, sort of like the low... There's like a low wall around the northern building that sort of like wraps around. It's like it like is a wall. It's a couple of feet high. It's more of a fence that wraps around a courtyard. And you walk up, you say hello, and uh, somebody pokes your head out, and they go, "Oh, hello, pilgrims, pilgrims, oh, pilgrims, welcome, what pilgrims, saying? welcome." What? We're looking for a friend of mine. Short has antlers. Have you seen anyone? Mm, antlers. I, I, we have no, none like that here. We have only the faithful of Sathoga. We were told they're here. I'm told? We haven't seen any visitors in a long time. And why is this faith you talk about? Why the, the area is so evil around here. Mm. If it's supposed Sithoga to be good. is not, not evil. Sithoga gives us all of his blessings. He is the one true God, the all-powerful. Who has the coin right now? I think I do. Uh, I'll bump your shoulder and uh, motion for the, show them the coin, see what they say. Um, I, I open my hand, I give it to you. 
Oh, you are you already know of Sothoga. That was a good prank. I see you are one of his disciples. Welcome, welcome. Uh, I'm more. I, I I go to Long Claw. I'm like I'm gonna confuse every more step I get inside uh, this place. A couple other people come out in the robes and they begin like welcoming you and like ushering in. You're like we are about to begin service and worship him. Come, come. Let's follow at a distance and motion for Bobo to lay low subtly. As I enter this place, can I do a religion check of good and yeah. evil? Yeah, you can absolutely do a religion check. Well, I crit, I, I crit it with no buff um, or anything, just a total crit. So you, you know um, as much as possible about Sothoka. Sothoka is um, a quite evil, um, aggressive god. He um, does not typically uh, accept a lot of um, conflict. Uh, he's very opposed to good people. The followers are typically very well voiced in poisons uh, and uh, occasionally number uh, very powerful uh, abilities that have been granted upon them by their dark god. Oh, God. Guys, don't drink anything or touch anything. <laughs> good one, brother. Good one. Now come, we were about to begin the service. Certainly you have an offering for the temple. What kind of uh, offering you required? Uh, any sort of token of their goodwill. And, and obviously we do not allow weapons inside the temple. Well, these are not the weapon. They're just flaming jazz hands, you know? Certainly you will agree that, you know, for preserving the sanctity of this space, you would not bring in such items. Absolutely do not agree. Well, then certainly we cannot allow you to come in That's fine. Uh, and complete yeah. your pilgrimage. Mr. World, how many cultists, let's we'll call them cultists, how many cultists are around us right now? Uh, slowly, about four have come out of the building to, to address you and eagerly welcome this group of uh, pilgrims who clearly know of the goodwill of Sathoga. And they're being very friendly to the group, to the four of you. Um, I, I I let him know like oh yes we'll come in in a moment um I need to discuss with my party you know I need to put things away and make sure everything's all right you know we don't lose anything on um, you can go in my, yourself and we'll follow in shortly I uh, guess we'll be we'll begin to prepare the ritual I think you will be quite pleased with today's proceedings fantastic that sounds wonderful my friend um just just give it a moment, you know. I think to my friends, you know, they don't want to, they don't want to hide their weapons. Let me, let me talk to them, you know. I don't want to, I, I, I uncast flame blades, and okay. be like, see, hands are free. Don't worry about it. We, I'll get, I'll talk to my friends. Don't worry about it. I'm the one with the token. Don't worry. Um, I kind of get the group to a side, um, away from. Ear reception, communication, listening. Can you guys hear this um, chanting that I'm trying to play? Guys, this place is hell. This is pure evil. Everything you drink and touch, I think they're sacrificing something or someone in there. Probably our friends, and they're going to separate my weapons from my cold, dead hands, and that's about the end of that. Um, uh, you guys begin to hear, um, you know, a very overtly religious ritual chanting begin to rise up inside the uh, temple. Uh, I think we should just, wa I walk in first and we start murdering things because I think these are evil and they're sacrificing good people and it's, even though they act, oh, friendly in quotation, part, in quotation, quotation, they're, they're, this, play, this is evil and they're giving the God I think sacrifices for power. I choose violence. And I'm going to, as soon as I can walk up with somebody not facing me, I'm going to attack them if I can. So we're going to, we, we want to do a surprise round. If we can, that would be great. Like, like walk in, 
behind me. They don't notice, and we just start shopping heads off. We didn't even notice. Hey, you guys come up to the back door. They went in. That back door is locked. Do we just say we were going to follow them in? Yeah, we we can go to the front door. <laughs> um, they clearly expect that you would go around to the front door for reasons that you don't know right now. Very presumptuous of them. Can I make? I can. Can I make a, a a fist and like bring it down at Bobo as like a go time motion? We didn't orchestrate that beforehand, but hopefully he gets the hand. I put my thumb up. Uh, can any of us unlock doors? I'm not good at that. Uh, I I break things. I yeah. I no, that was that was Bane's job. Uh, yeah, we don't have that. Bobo is uh, all right at unlocking doors in the case that we need him to be. It's not his forte, but he can't really. I don't like this, um, and I'm not getting rid of my weapons, so I don't know what to fucking tell them, except for get wrecked scrubs. Where's our friends? Um, you don't have a cloak that you can, like, kind of put your hands down and... Absolutely not. Oh, God. Kick in the door, start swinging. I knock on the door. He's like, guys, we're ready to come in. Um, there's no answer, but you do hear the chanting... Um, from inside the building, and you would guess that that is why they cannot hear your knocking. Ah, oh, crap. Uh. So we were supposed to go in and they lock the doors behind them? You're supposed to come to service. They did not let you come in the back door. So let's go to the front. I say kick in the back door. Go in from behind. If they can't knock, then they can't hear us. Well, there's a lot of chanting in there. How do we know it's not more people in there than what we saw out here? We could be walking into a death trap, especially if they're planning on sacrificing our friends. Means there's some sort of uh, sacrificial apparatus in there, and uh, we don't really know. Okay, how we're wasting time. We need to go in. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, I want to um, Car Carvath. I want to give you aid to you break that pull the door out of the hinges. I can certainly do that. That would be a strength and check, right? Him aid in the form of guidance, or are you giving him aid in the form of handing him a crowbar? Um, you can give aid as he's holding on, and I'm holding on too, and he's pulling with my assistance, and we okay. both pull him to break the door down. But he's someone rolling, huh? So you're taking the help action. Got yeah, it. help action. Yeah, help action. So, strength check with advantage. Yes. Uh, that would be uh, a 19 total. <laughs> uh, I think that is good. Let me double check. That's pretty good. I thought it would be better uh, than yep. before. So with a successful wrench, um, the door ordinarily opens inside, but with a wrench... Um, your strength is able to pull the door past its hinges with a skeel and breaking. Um, and you hear the chanting inside the temple, stop. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, the, the uh, door you open goes. into a room that has a long wooden table that has 16 wooden stools, um, seven on each side and then one on each end. An empty room with just a table? Yep. Table and stools for people to sit at the table. I walk in saying, oh my god, that door is broken. Show me I should fix that. Nobody comes? Um, yes, you can hear the sounds of people starting to come out of uh, the, the only... So there's a door to the north and um, actually there's a hallway to the north then there's a door to on um, the north and south end of the eastern wall of this room that is um, for Bobo who likes maps about 12 feet wide and 
uh, 35 feet tall. About five feet down from each wall, there is a um, door that opens, and you see uh, acolytes begin to come in through each side of those doors, and we will roll initiative. That's a 19 for Kavar Roth. 11. I've got a nat 20 for 22. Okay. 22 for Xenon. 11 for Uka. 15 for Varath. Uh, 11 for Ukin, you said? Yes, sir. What did Bobo get? 18. Uh, okay, it is uh, Xenon's turn first. And they're coming in two different doors, you said? Yep, you can see them coming in through both doors. How many do I see? Uh, right now you see one at each door. One at each door. But you know there's at least four in the building. All right, so I'm going to uh, go to the closest door and rage. So give me a deck save. From your stupid guy. Okay. Uh, what happens on a failure? Um, he's going to get some damage. Here. So he'll take only one of my lightning damages. Okay. And then I'm going to smack him. Maybe. 14 and 15 to hit. Those both hit. So 19, 21, 23 damage. Okay, so you're, uh, you, as you rage, a lightning bolt shoots out uh, and sort of slightly tases him, surprising him. And then uh, your axe uh, chops through him. You continue moving forward as you see another cultist coming, and you chop him down as well. And so you've taken out two cultists. And you move now into a room that is very clearly um, just like the room where they worship. It's a temple. Uh, you can see several pillars. Um, in the interior, it's spacious and clean. Uh, you can smell the scent of incense um, in the room. Uh, and more importantly, you see tied to a table in the middle with several candles and other sort of religious accoutrements around him, the still form of luminaries bound to the table. Just lumen, nobody else? Correct. Okay. I so there's an altar on the eastern, on the near side of the room that also has two candelabra on it, which are lit um, with uh, flames very clearly flames. However, these flames are black and blue and clearly quite dread rather than ordinary fire. Um, I will, before I completely end my turn, I'll free action some speech and I will call over my shoulder. I found a lumen. Maybe uh, Umbra's here as well. In my very ragey, angry dragon voice as these motherfuckers get chopped. And that's the end of my turn. Okay, uh, it is now then um, the uh, 
remaining six acolytes this turn. Uh, one of them grabs the candelabra and shoves it at you from approximately 10 feet away um, with an attack that threatens to burn you with the fire. Uh, he got a 13 to hit. Uh, no. No. He did not hit. Uh, and then another one steps forward to attack you. Uh, does a 15 hit. Yes. Okay, so you are going to take six slashing damage. Aft. Yes. Okay. Um, and then in the other side, uh, you see these cultists um, who recognize that they have been betrayed by who they thought was their brother, Ukin, uh, dash forward and attempt to slay the traitor to Sagaroth. Or Sagoth, whatever his name is. Sagatha. Um, a 14 and a 9. Do those hit? It, it, it goes king, king right off me. Uh, and also the 6 and the 9 also miss. So the four of them attempt to swarm him and uh, put him under through the weight of sheer numbers and are unable to touch the skilled druid. Uh, my skin is carapace then, armored, so they hit my metal armor parts. It is then Kvareth's turn. Baroth's turn. Thank you for pronouncing my name right. Uh, so how many? So I should be right by Ukin. So there's four yes. bad there guys are around. Four me. that are very easy for you to get to. True. Uh, I will as long as I can get all four within ten feet of me. Uh, I'm going to do a daunting roar. Okay. Uh, so each of them has to say uh, DC 14 wisdom saving throw or become frightened of me until the end of my next turn. Uh, wisdom? Yep. Uh, you uh, see two, three of them are very clearly um, startled and afraid of the mighty bestial roar that has come out of your throat um, and are uh, frightened. However, one of them is focused on the task and so devoted to, to Sagatha that he is not afraid. He gets the blade first. And my, my roar will be Umbra! <laughs> Calling for my friend uh, and we'll take some swipes with the guy who's not afraid. Uh, first attack. Does that cost you your action to do that roar? Bonus action. Okay. Uh, so I won't get my butt attack, but that's okay. So first attack is 14 to hit. Uh, that hits. And then be ugh, only four damage, so assuming it doesn't kill him. Uh, ah, only a nine to hit on the second one. The nine does not hit. Yep, so only only the four, but our three people are afraid. Okay, it is then, I believe, Bobo's turn. Yes. All right, so I'm um, I'm hovering a. Above the entire area. Yeah, you can't see into this building then if you remain out there. You saw your friends bust into the house and uh, heard the sounds of fighting from inside. Yeah, I, I have a feeling they're doing okay. Uh, I'm just keeping an eye on the uh, dock building with the towers. Okay. And I'm, I'm doing a perception check on that to see if I can see any movement within. And I didn't roll very well. Um, but yeah, I'm just hovering, basically keeping a chance. Basically, if I see anybody trying to come out of the, any of the other buildings, I'm going to put a cloud of daggers over the doorway. Okay. That's my, like, I'm holding a action, sort of. Okay. I'm, I'm getting ready. But no, I can't do that. Never mind. I'm just, I'm just watching very closely. You, you could hold the action. There's no reason you couldn't. But if I cast that, I would fall to the ground. <laughs> yeah, so that wouldn't be that good. Because you all have different action. <laughs> yeah, so I'm ready to shoot a firebolt, basically. Okay. 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 End uh, of turn. Ukin, it is now your turn. Um. And I know you said you dismissed your flame blade. Well, I did not dismiss my my halo yeah. spores. Okay, I was just trying to clarify where you were at. Um, they, they enter my space, right? Ten yeah. feet. Yes, but you're not gone yet. Now you're going. Okay. 
All right. Um, as they get close to me, I'm going to go primal savagery on them. I'm going to grow some teeth and bite into their neck and into somebody's neck right next to me. <laughs> like, like total, like, like I, my hood comes out brothers embrace me. And I grab his neck for pure intimidation purposes and murder. What is this? Oh, it's just like you attacking with your fists. No, I can grow teeth, claws. Or... Oh, I got you. It's a cantrip. Okay. Yeah, it's a it's a cantrip, but I can grow different things, and it's acid if if it succeed. But I think a ten doesn't hit. A ten does not hit. No, I tried, and he kind of dodged out of my way. I was trying to chomp his mouth open. And I, I'm still kind of like, I'm gonna rip you guys apart. Okay, so now you see inside of the room, and so the only person who sees this is Xenon. You see four uh, who, in addition to the green robes, uh, are wearing, um, you know, sort of like jewelry that indicates they're somehow more senior in the religion. Uh, one of whom continues to chant, attempting to maintain the ritual above luminaries. And you can hear uh, him chanting and telling and beseeching on Sagatha to help him to destroy their enemies and to accept the sacrifice of this follower of the non-believers, this heretic, and accept his, you see one of them dash out a room to the south. Uh, and two of them uh, come chanting towards you, one of whom uh, weaving words that attempt to um, stop you in your tracks. And I need you to make a wisdom save with disadvantage. Who? Um, Xenon. And you can feel the incense. Make It feels like it's making you more susceptible to this type of magic. Ooh, nice roll. Well, there's your answer. Uh, what's, what's the result? Oh. Uh, so you are held, Xenon. Uh, so I believe hold person yeah, results in you being like paralyzed, that. yes? Something like that, yep. Yep, so you are paralyzed uh, for a minute or as long as this um, guy can hold concentration on you. Uh, and, the other one, and another one moves forward with two ritual daggers and attempts to stab you twice with those daggers. Well, if I'm paralyzed, that's an automatic hit. So just tell me the damage. Is it an automatic hit? I wasn't certain if it was just yeah, it damage. Is. Just tell me the damage. Okay. Um, so you take eight damage. Piercing. I my rage take, uh, also. Yep. That's full damage. Cool. Yep. Um, you. Why, why would you lose rage? You are getting hit. Not if I'm I'm incapacitated. Um, paralyzed. Just keep your rage if you're incapacitated. Okay. So you take eight damage. Yep. Uh, and those of you who are familiar with spell casting and can hear Ukin, you can hear um, the ritual in the other room change, and you can sort of hear that there is magic being cast in that other room. Guys, we need to get in there. Uh, and so then it is Xenon's turn. And you can make another save again with disadvantage. Yeah, so I'll just stay there. Uh, and this time you can tell that it is very much this incense is making you so content uh, and pliable and... Um, manipulatable by the um, people. Uh, and you see one of the cultists um, move up and, and grapple you and take your arms and hold them behind your back. I'm worried that you might escape since you clearly look very large and powerful. Um, and the other cultist that was fighting you attempts to burn you with the candelabra again. Uh, this does 11 necrotic damage to you. Uh, and then it is Varth's turn. 
Oh, no, the cultists that are there. Three of those cultists are going to attempt to flee um, the combat. I forgot about those four cultists that are fighting. So three of them attempt to flee. Um, do you have anything you'd like to do, with those of you who would have reactions to such things? That's opportunity attack. Time. So uh, oh, only a nine to hit. I rolled another three. A nine does not hit. Uh, Ukin, are you doing anything? Sorry, DC 14. I think your your rage was still working. I think that the piercing damage um, where he hits you with both daggers was still half Xenon. I don't see anything in Incapacitated that would end rage. But I think rage continues if you take damage as well. So I think you're still raging. Rage seems to only end at unconsciousness, not incapacitation. Yeah. However, and and they get advantage on paralyzed, not auto hits. Yeah. yeah, but if they hit, they crit. I, I've been rolling. I haven't been <laughs> auto hitting him. So her. they would crit and do double damage, and then her rage would have halved it, so she would have taken exactly the same damage in the end. Correct. And hello, spores, to the one next to me, the one of them, okay. the, the one that tried to bite. I'm gonna hello spore. DC con fourteen. Um, okay, uh, he failed. How much damage do you do? He takes five necrotic to the face. Um, that one is now down. Uh, and now it is Varith's turn. And so you see these three cultists run into the uh, worship room. Um, Xenon, you see that they are beginning to make their way towards the door that's to the south where you saw... Um, one of the higher ranking clerics leave for. So I'll move over and attack the the wizard that's holding Xenon with a spell. Uh, We'll do two here. So you move into this room, you see two high ranking clerics uh, one of whom is right near Xenon, another of them who is slightly far back. You also see one person is holding Xenon's arms behind her back. Um, and another one that is like stabbing her with a candelabra that has fire on it. But like dark and evil looking fire is what you see in this room. Sure. The the cleric needs to go first, so we'll do do the first attack uh, for an 11 to hit. That does not hit. That's not hit. We'll do another attack. There's a 19 to hit. That does it. And then we'll do uh, we'll do a uh, superiority move maneuver here. Uh, I think we'll do a trip attack. Uh, so I add a d8 to my damage, and he has to succeed on a strength uh, strength saving throw of 14, or be tripped. Okay, he is not knocked to the ground. But how much damage do you? Do? Uh, so I rolled a one in the superiority and a nine, and so thirteen damage. Uh, Xenon, you feel the magic that had wrapped up your body and stopped you from moving fade away, uh, and now you are very, very angry. And I'll, I got my my bonus attack. I'll do a the butt attack against the one holding Xenon. Uh, so this is my fault, but I just remembered what the effects of Hollow does. You're good, so you have disadvantage on all your attacks in this area. Um, Vyrath. Wow. Uh, all right. I'll just roll this one again for that. Okay, so uh, 17 to hit with the disadvantage. That, that still hits. Yes. Uh, it's only a d4. Do, 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 do. So, ooh, seven damage on the butt attack. Okay. Uh, he is still up. Is that cleric knocked on his back now? Is he on the ground? You tripped. Ta- you, you tripped. Attacked him again. He he succeeded on the strength save. Okay. Okay. That's fine. But he lost the spell in his efforts to avoid being knocked on his ass. 
Uh, after Varth, it is Bobo. Okay, I'm uh, I'm hovering approximately 50 feet above the battle area, and I keep an eye on the towers, and I'm uh, uh, I'm gonna gaze across the swamp to the uh, I'm gonna gaze across the swamp to the um, the other island with the chaotic smoke, since we're probably a little bit closer to that. So you do not have the eyes of the eagle. So you cannot see what's over there. It is uh, very far away from where you are. Those those eyes allow her to see for miles. All right. I think I think my friends need me. I'm gonna like hover down to the ground, which is gonna take me several turns to go down. Yeah, if you were fifty feet, you can go down thirty now. So I'll I, go down thirty. And then you could dash to go down again. All right, so I go all the way down to the ground. And then you have 10 feet of movement left. And I start running across the ground. Okay. And I drop levitate. Yep. You don't have to drop it yet if you don't want to. There's no reason to. You might want to levitate later. Uh, concentration up to 10 minutes. Yeah, it's it's done. Okay. 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 So there's nobody in the room when we came in, right? Uh, nope. Uh, you killed the one in front of you, and the others have all fled into the other room. With my blood, with my bloody face, I kind of put blood on my face. Keep walking in, and I scream in the room. You want to see a true god? I am your true god. See the horrors I will create, and I create um eight giant giant wolf spiders on the walls. Okay. Oh, yeah, giant spiders. So you are casting conjure animals. Yes, I conjure eight in total. Okay. They are one fourth. And there's eight of them. And they all can make a bite plus five, one D eight plus three damage. Con save when they bite eleven constitution. Yep. All right, so you've summoned them. It's now their turn. So that's going to be eight attacks plus five. So your bonus action is telling them to just attack. Attack every <laughs> single um, acolyte, cultist, and evil being that my eyes are fixated on and continue until they're all dead. Okay. So um, I'm rolling like crazy. Uh, well, let me see. Can I see all the rolls? No, nope, I can't see all the rolls. Jesus. Sorry, guys. I want to do four at a time. So a plus 20, 22, 25, 10, and 17. 22, 25, 10, and 17. Uh, the 10 does not hit. So that's three concept of 11. Uh, one failed. Uh, so the one that uh, Varath is attacking um, goes down underneath the wolf spiders, attacks, uh, and now there's just the one um, up here that you guys can see. There's the one casting the ritual, uh, and then there's the one who was who is going to. Continue to quickly attempt to dispatch this powerful dragonborn before him. But hold on. I still have four more spiders to attack more? with. Okay. 17, 13, 20, Which and 16. Which ones are you like, directing them to attack? They're attacking the, the those four. The first four were the people in the crowd. The, uh, these four are the main people on the stage. Okay. There's only one guy that's casting the ritual in the, at the So altar. four spiders on the ritual guy. Okay. And... 17, 13, 20, and 16. Uh, all of those hit. So he needs to make four con saves. And I didn't do damage. So. Uh, only one failed. So he's paralyzed. And the other guy that I got hit got paralyzed too. And this guy takes 17 damage. 
Well, the other guy that got hit is dead, so it doesn't matter that he's paralyzed. Yeah, he's super dead, so he's not casting anything again. <laughs> and everybody in the crowd is getting attacked by giant spiders. And I started laughing, like, oh, I am the true god, die! Okay, so the one um, attacks Xenon uh, with a dagger from each hand. Uh, they have advantage. A 12 doesn't hit you, right, Xenon? No. Uh, but a uh, critical hit does. Fortunately, these are just daggers of the ordinary ritual variety. So we're not rolling a whole bunch of damage dice here. Just need to find D4s, which always seem to fall to the bottom of the bag. Uh, you take 10 piercing damage um, from those daggers. But you're rage, so it goes down to 5. Uh, and then you guys hear, Xenon, this is a familiar moan to you, as you heard these type of sounds often when you were in the plague pits. But you see from the room to the south, four zombies uh, stumble into the room. Closest target should be the spiders. Oh, perfect. <clears throat> perfect. More zombies. I'm gonna. When I see them, I'm gonna holler to Bobo. Uh, Bobo, zombies. Uh, okay. Uh, it is now. Um, the cultists who are, who is attempting to burn you with the candelabras turn. The other one focuses on holding you still. Um, he does not hit you even with advantage with the candelabra. Um, and it is then Varoth's turn. Is someone still grappling Xenon? Uh, yep. Yeah. So Xenon has one cultist holding her arms behind her back. And then there's one of the like le leaders, the higher ranking clerics looking, who's just like stabbing the shit out of her. And then there's one that's poking her with a candelabra. <laughs> uh, I'll I'll go for uh, the one grappling her so she can attack with a uh, restriction here. But I am at disadvantage now because the spooky, gross, evil area. Is that right? Oh, uh, it's Xenon's turn. Fuck. She goes before oh. you. All right. Never mind. No bad. <laughs> it's all right. <laughs> No, it's okay. I've got uh, to break free of the stupid grapple, right? Uh, yes, you are grappled. You could attack with disadvantage. Fuck that. I have advantage on this anyways because I'm raging angry. So 16 or 21, one of them gets me out probably. Um, yes. Okay, good. So... Fuck that guy that's right there was holding me. I need him to make a save for my um, ragey. Good. He can take some damage. I'll take uh, three lightning damage, and then I will just bonus action since I use my action to break free and whack the damn guy because he pissed me off. What's giving, you, what's giving you this bonus action? Why I have two attacks per action plus bonus action, right? Yeah, but your action was to escape. All right, well, then I'm just free then, and he takes yeah. the lightning damage. Yes. Okay, there you go. Uh, it is now his turn. He's going to go, ah, get the habit, and attempt to flee you, uh, which will also end up running past um, Barath. Yeah, opportunity. Fuck him up. Yeah. So you would get the first reaction attack, Xenon. Well, it'll just be the one that I just rolled then, so 25. And the one with little spiders. And he'll take 10 damage. Well, does he take in my rage damage too? Uh, yeah, he would still get the extra rage damage, but All 10 right. already takes him out. All right, good. He can get fucked. Eat shit, you evil motherfucker. Um, now it is Varoth's turn. All right, we're going after the... Oh, the other one is going to try to stab you with the candelabra again. No longer has advantage, and now he sucks at fighting again and misses. 
Now it's Barth's turn. Okay, finally, my turn, right? Nothing else? Yep. Cool. Yes. <laughs> uh, one of them is a cleric, the other one is not a cleric? Um, so you see that there is one of the unadorned acolytes, one right. adorned acolyte who is right by Xenon. Uh, and that um, is, and then you see four zombies that have entered the room on the southern side. Sure. Uh, we'll get within 10 feet of the adorned cleric guy and start whacking. Okay. Uh, so with disadvantage, that's a 20, dirty 20. Hits. Uh, so that is ah, four damage. Okay. Uh, and we'll do, we'll do another superiority die here for a trip attack. So DC 14 strength save. He goes down onto his butt. Nice. And we'll add, and we'll add eight, you are eight in melee, um, with a prone person, you're at regular attack. You'd have advantage, yes. but this uh, advantage. And add eight onto that damage from the superiority die. So that okay. should be 12, 11? Okay. Yeah. 12. Uh, so second attack is normal attack. That's nice. Uh, ooh, 18 to hit. Hits. And that'll be uh, nine damage. And we'll just hit him. Bonus attack with the butt of the glaive for a 13 to hit. That does hit. Nice. Uh, that is a D4. Get that up here. For five more damage. Pow, pow, pow. Okay, uh, Bobo, it will take you both of your turns to reach the room with the table and the chairs in it. Your move and your dash. Okay, that's what I'll do. Okay, you guys hear uh, some noise from the room behind you. Ukin, it's your turn. I'm still laughing maniacally, like, <laughs> you're going to die. <laughs> um, how many bad guys are left in the room? In total, uh, there are four zombies, one adorned um, cultist, and one unadorned cultist. So, it's two, two cultists and four zombies. Yes. So, the zombie is going to get. I am going to cast. Hmm. Give me one second. I know about zombies and they know they're poison. All right. So I'm gonna cast shield touch um as far away as possible to one of the zombies. Okay. One of the zombies going to, to my friend. That's a 19 to hit. Hits. Shield. He takes seven. Okay. And the two cultists um left. Each one is gonna get two spiders on them. Okay. First spider. A fifteen and a twenty four. Both hit. It's going to be... They both pass their save. Con saves? Okay. Yep. So they're going to take half. And then... How much damage is that? Uh, for the actual bite, it's 10 plus 3 plus 3. Okay. So 16. Um, that one is... I'm going to say that's the adorned one. That adorned one is dead. So the second spider... That's going to be a 11 and a 10. Both of those miss. And then I have four spiders left. They are going to both attack um, two zombies. Oh, one, two each. Okay. Two for one. A Over 20, both of them. Okay, they both hit. Um, but 
The poison he doesn't do anything. These bites, it appears to do nothing. To these oh, max damage 16 on that bite. They're immune to poison. Yeah, but the bite is regular piercing. Okay. So okay. the bite, the regular bite is 16 plus uh, plus six, is 24 damage from a regular okay. bite. Okay, you see, um, the uh, zombie, for the first one, the spider jumps on it, bites him, he staggers, but continues pressing forward. Uh, and then the second one also bites him deep in its neck, and he just groans and continues to come forward. And my last two spiders, 15 and 24. Both hit. And they do a, a 23 total uh, piercing damage. You gotta tell me what each one does, but. One eight plus three, one seven plus three. All right, both of those undead fortitude saves passed as well. So that zombie is still on its feet. That was just the damage. Eight plus three yep. and seven plus three. Yep. And so each time you would reduce it to zero, it gets undead fortitude save, and they passed all four of and that one passed all four of its undead fortitude saves. All right. So it continues to be alive. Uh, and now those ones, which are, um, and so they are surrounded by the spiders, and they are going to attempt to rip the spiders apart. So these are giant spiders, correct? Yes, they're giant spiders. Size of a human. Oh, you're human. Okay, go. They're not. There's, there's <laughs> almost size of a human because of the oh, giant okay. spiders. Oh, what did Ukin do on his turn? Oh, I cast Chill Touch. That's right. Okay, so. Um, of the four zombies that were in the room, three of them hit the spiders. And so I'm going to pull up the giant spider page here. Um, okay. Uh, and their slams do 6, 10, 16, so they do not take out that giant spider. Uh, however, behind it, you see four more zombies press into the room. Oh, God. Uh, and behind them, you see another of the um, ornate clerics. But you also see him now accompanied by a grossly obese, um, graying man in incredibly ornate green robes um, who has a tonsure uh, haircut around his... And he um, wields... A wicked looking sickle in his hands. Um, let's see what he can do, shall we? Mm, no. <laughs> no, he says. Okay. Um, I hope this guy speaks because I imagine when he speaks, he speaks hutties and sounds just like Jabba the Hutt. Um, he definitely has that type of accent. You know, he you know he's very devoted to Sagofa uh, and attempts to emulate the great frog, um, who rules us all's image in okay. his speech patterns. Um, but the first thing you do. Uh, see is you see in your midst spring up um, what appears to be a glowing sort of frog. Um, um, that, that immediately lashes out uh, and attempts to hit Veroth with its tongue. Fuck that dice. It keeps falling off the table. Uh, it probably does not hit our heavily armored friend. What's your AC, Varth? 17. Uh, it does not hit you with his spiritual weapon. Gross. Um, and then you also need to make a deck save. That's a solid 10. Okay. Um, he is, so you're now going to take 2d8 radiant damage, having failed your save against his 
a sacred flame spell as you think you've dodged this tongue and now you think it might be a setup as right where you dodge to explodes in a ball of radiant energy that does four damage to you. Oh, cool. Uh, and then it is Xenon's turn. And there's still one right by me? Uh, yes. There's actually, yep, the one who's trying to stab you with a candelabra is still right by you. So make the deck save. <clears throat> uh, he passed. All right. And then, so... Okay. 26 for four, eight, ten damage. Uh, he's super dead. Okay, so I'm going to take my movement. How far? There's nobody else um, around me hostile, right? Just the zombies who are over on the south end fighting the spiders. All right, so how far away is this um, huge mongus chungus guy? You cannot get into melee combat with him because he has the zombies around him. Okay. And none of my there, there are eight zombies, or there's seven zombies, or eight zombies left between you and him. Eight zombies between. All right, I'm just gonna move up to the first set of zombies then. One of said zombies being just covered in spiders. All right, fourteen and twenty-three to hit. Both of those hit. Uh, 23 hits, and what's the other one? 14. Yes, both of those hits. On. All right, so five, seven damage from the first one, okay. and then 12 Are damage. you talking the one that has the spiders on it or a new one? The closest one to me when I head towards um, the big guy. Okay, so we'll say a new one. Okay. Leave the spiders to deal with that one. So seven, Hit seven and then? And then 12. Okay. Um, it is not down. So you're not using your magic battle axe, or you are? I am. Just in one hand? Yeah, just one hand. Right. Okay. Um, it is now Varath's turn. So is is there another door that hasn't been opened where we haven't seen anybody a, come out of yet? A double door um, that what you would guess is the front door. Okay, so there's... And then there's the hallway in the other room that you didn't do anything down. Okay, which might lead to something where Umbra would be prisoner from. I'm not yeah. sure what would yeah. be down that hallway. Sure, we got eight zombies and a big old frog guy in front of us. Uh, I'm definitely not the one to run down the hallway in a band of combat, uh, so I will join Xenon and whacking some zombies uh, and just get just get my 10 feet in front of the zombie and start hitting it. Mm -hmm. uh, and with disadvantage again, right? Yep. Uh, ooh, roll a natural one, so a seven. Okay, seven does not hit a zombie. You need a okay. two to hit them. I need a, I need a two? Yes, oh, I need to roll it. Yeah, yeah, I got you. I got you. All right, second <laughs> deck. Uh, so a 12 to hit. Hits. Uh, and eight damage. Okay. Well, is that the same one that um, Xenon is fighting, or a different one? Uh, sure, yeah. Let's do that one. Uh, that one goes down. Got it. Uh, and if I can if I can hit one with the butt of my glaive, I'll do that as well as a bonus action. You can, yep. Uh, roll the four, so a ten. Hits. Which hits. Got D4. I got to get my D4 out of here. And that will be uh, seven damage. Nice. Okay. Uh, is that the one covered in spiders or a different one? Uh, whichever the other one next to Xenon was. <laughs> Hard to tell with all these zombies around. You got reach. You can pick which one of this front group before you want to attack. Let's, let's go with the one not covered in zombies so the zo or the spiders okay. so the spiders can do their job. Uh, Bobo, there is a hallway to your north. There's the sound of fighting ahead of you through either what side of the double doors. Oh, I'm going right for the fighting. Okay. North or south side door? Uh, the north side? 
Okay. Can I hear Xenon? Because uh, that's where I'm in, going. You where, I, where I hear Xenon. When you go into this room, um, you can see that <laughs> Xenon and Varith are up fighting um, eight zombies. Um, and behind them, you can see a incredibly obese yeah. Um, person decked out as far as like these acolytes that you've seen. With a I don't like the looks of this guy. With a prominent holy symbol of Sagatha around his neck. <laughs> you can't hide from me, cleric. I'm going to cast Firebolt 26 to hit. Uh, against the um, Abbot? Yep. Nice crit. Uh, 26 does hit. Yeah, he critted. That's nice. Oh, that was a crit? Yep. He yep. rolled a nat 20. Okay. Natty 20. Okay, so roll your double damage. I hit him right in his tonsured head. Uh, what do I do? Uh, you just right You said I roll... Uh, use... I got the... You just push the roll damage button since you used the uh, D&D Reon feature. It'll automatically roll the crit damage for you. Okay. Yeah, it did 26. 26 damage to him. Got it. Yeah. With the with a cantrip. End of turn. Uh, Ukin. Um... I'm going to use the four spiders to kill the acolyte to go straight around the walls towards the main boss. Okay. So the spiders are your... The, some of the spiders you order to move along the ceiling and the walls. Okay. They're going straight to the main boss and they're going to basically try to go over, like around the zombie yeah. straight to the boss. So, so they got to move twice to get up to the yeah. long mm -hmm. him. So they're up above him now. And what how many zombies are left Around yeah. long four zombie, you have four spiders on one zombie. I'm gonna keep three spiders on that zombie, but one of them is gonna attack first before everybody moving. Okay. He so one is attacks. one attack. One for all the biscuits. <laughs> What'd you get? A net one. No. Spider misses. So the three that leave, he takes an opportunity to attack in one of them. Uh, he net. He's gonna finish off the spider that he hit last time. So one. Oh spider. man. So two spiders. I'm gonna crawl up on the walls and rush with the boss. Okay. So the spiders. Down to seven. I guess they have to web themselves up to the ceiling. I don't really know how they would um, otherwise get to the ceiling. So they're going to web up well, the ceiling. That's the thing spiders do. Uh, and then also move so they're above, uh, around the door above him. Mm -hmm. They're going straight to the boss as close as possible. Yep. So he focus on them, not on us. And I'm 120 feet. I'm going to shield touch the boss. For a total of 11. Yay! You miss. I know. And then I'm going to step back as far as possible behind the altar. Okay. So and and kind of duck behind the altar. Okay. Without being prone. Yep. I'm done. Uh, spiders are done, which brings us to um, the um, slightly ordained cleric. Uh, who is going to uh, cast a spell on Vareth? You hear a word echo in your brain that says, flee! So roll with disadvantage a, um, I think it's a wisdom save throw? Yes. Why is it disadvantage? Uh, because of the incense that is still burning in the room. Ah, right. So I got a 14 flat with the disadvantage. Uh, you have passed the save. That's right. Um, 
Now you uh, guys see the um, Abbott look around, uh, and then he disengages, um, saying, Minions, destroy them, as he moves back uh, into the room, leaving the spiders behind, being careful to avoid their claws and their bites as um, they move around. But you see as he opens the door behind him, other zombies begin to press forward into the room. There are now 12 zombies Jeez. pressing into the room in front of you. Um, or Sorry, there's 11 because one of them... Oh no, your spider failed to kill him. But um, there is only 11 because Vareth did not fail to kill his. Okay, so one of them is going to attack uh, Xena. It does not have to move to do so, but misses. One of them is going to move forward, triggering Sentinel. Would you like to use that ability? Uh, yeah, and any any of them that go anywhere away from me or attack somebody. Or, okay. 23 to hit. Uh, 5, 7 damage. Okay. And any that enter within 10 feet of me get stopped, an opportunity right? to attack. So it stops. It's moved forward. It is uh, then going to attack you back. Uh, it rolls a 1, so it missed you with a 4. Um, now um, two more are going to move forward towards um, Varath. Triggering that- an opportunity attack when they enter within 10 feet. Okay. Yeah, yeah that's a 12 plus 6, 18. Uh, hits. So we got ooh, 11 you damage. That, that was still with disadvantage. Did you roll that with yep, disadvantage? Yep, I rolled a 14 and an 18. So you okay, how much damage did you do? Uh, 11. Okay. Um, they continue to press forward attacking. Uh, those two attacked Xenon. Uh, these two press forward. Uh, one of them hits uh, Varith and does four damage. Mm-hmm. Um, two hits on Xenon. First one does eight damage. Second one does eight. Those are both regular bludgeoning damage. No saves afterwards because these aren't the plague zombies that you fought before. Um, and then uh, two more hit Varith, doing nine and then seven damage. And then there's one left that attacks Xenon and does five bludgeoning damage. Uh, and that brings us then to Xenon's turn. So there's two on me then, and then two. There is seven on you. Seven on me. Okay. Well, whichever one's the most damaged, he can make a deck save. Uh, fails. Five lightning. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna just uh, do some swinging. 13, 18, 22 to hit. Okay. All three. Yes. So 13 hits. How much damage? Um, 10 damage. Okay. Uh, that one goes down. I don't want you to. I don't want you to have to buy a car. So the second one that is gonna. Oh, that also hits, but it hits the one that you stopped from walking past you. Yep, so it'll be 13 damage. Okay. And then the last hit is 9, 11 damage. And it remains on its feet. Varath, you have five, four of whom are right on you, and then the one that you froze was Sentinel. Oh, I don't have Sentinel. I just have an opportunity to pull on master. The other one that you hit with pull on master. Yeah. Okay. But continue. Well, you have five that are surrounding you now. Sure. We'll hit that one first, the hurt one. Uh, with disadvantage is a 15. Which. Uh, that is the one that um, got electrocuted and died. Because that was the oh. most damage. One. Okay. Well, then a new one <laughs> gets hit with 15 okay. uh, for seven damage. Okay. Uh, and then second attack on the same one. Ooh. 20 and an 18, so 24 to hit. Uh, four, nine damage. 
Okay, so you did 16 damage? Yep. Is it down? Slash. Nope. Uh, well, butt attack. Uh, oh, I'm rolling pretty well. 19 to 15 is for 21. Uh, D4. Is uh, five damage. He remains on his feet. Ah. So there are three that are injured and staggering, but still pressing forward, animated only by hunger for the living. Uh, as it's Bobo's turn. All right. I see Xenon keep like pointing at the uh, at the incense burning candelabra things. I'm going to run over there, knock him over. Okay. Okay, that's what I'm doing. Um, they're knocked over onto the ground. They remain lit, um, being lit by dark magic. Not I stomp them out. Don't work. Uh, uh, Ukin. <laughs> I, as I see him stomping, see you should have used your your pee bottle and pee on ancient pee on it. You should have turned it off. <laughs> Don't give it to me to drink. <laughs> You're right. I got more bottles in here. And then I'm gonna <clears throat> attempt to shield touch the boss again. You can no longer see him. Oh, I can no longer see him. Nope. The closest thing to a boss is one of the ornate middle clerics. But did any spiders reach him before he left? He disengaged. Oh. He did nothing else but bail. And tell his zombies to kill you guys. Oh, he saw the spiders and he ran like a girl. Got it. He saw you guys fucking carve Girl up in a cheerleader and outfit. Like, They're strong. Bye. <laughs> um. So, yeah. Um, she'll touch one of the zombies. Okay. The one closest to Sinan. Okay. There's several that are like staggered and almost dead. So I'm just going to assume one of those three. 16. Hits. For, I think that's three damage. For three damage. It remains on its feet. You're going to have to do better than that, Druid. <laughs> then my spider horde with seven spiders left. Four attacks on the zombies. Uh, hold on. Why did I clear? Dang it. That's a... I can't see it. I see an 11 and a 19. A 4 and an 8. So that's a 16, 24. And uh, I don't know if a 9 and a 13 hit. Uh, all of those hit. So the all three are hitting individually. Tell me if they're bludgeoning damage, and I'll roll a bunch of undead fortitudes until you're out of one hit zombies. So how much bludgeoning or piercing damage from the first one? Uh, from the first group is uh, four in one, nine in the other, four. ten. Nine, nothing's killed one yet. Ten. Ten. Nope. And seven. Finally, one goes down. And then there's three left. One, okay. two, three. Taking a nine, six, and ten. Those all hit. All right. Nope. The six does not hit. Uh, yeah, I was like, I rolled a one. <laughs> I was like, dang. So two hits. That's two D8s plus three. That's a nine and a four. Uh, four knocks one down. So two of two of the zombies go down. Oh, Jesus. There's one one-hit zombie left, and then there are uh, eight others in the room with you. I'm like... You can do it, guys! And I, and I hide behind the altar again. And that should be the end of my turn. Okay. Uh, you hear 
a voice in your head uh, telling you to approach Bobo. Roll a wisdom save with disadvantage as the cleric looks at you and issues a word of command in your head. Uh, well, Mr. World, I actually have advantage against magic uh, wisdom saves. Okay, but you also have disadvantage because of the incense, so it'll be a regular save. Uh, I thought I knocked over the incense. You knocked over the fires, not the incense. And the incense would still be, like, in the air. It's just a feature okay. of this particular room. All right, you got it. All right, uh, wisdom? Yep. Yeah, yeah. You passed. <laughs> oh, you you do not obey the calling language of the cleric. I'm not just such a sub sucker. You're going to brainwash here, cleric. Okay. Three zombies on Vareth. Uh, none of them hit. Uh, none of them hit. Or one of them hits Xenon. Does six bludgeoning damage, and then four more zombies press into the room, pressing the zombies forward. Mm, actually, nope, you're, they're out of zombies. No more zombies are pressing forward. Um, Xenon, it's your turn. So there's still all the ones engaged around me, right? Yep, there are five around you. One of them is one tap, you said? Yep. All right, so have that one make a dex save for me for six damage. Failed. Six damage. Undead fortitude passed. Fucker. Um, 25 for nine. Twenty-five for nine damage. Um, that one is a not a hit. And then, does a nine hit? Oh yes. All right. So ten, twelve. So two hits. One dealing eleven damage with rage. The other dealing twelve. Uh, the first one knocks him down. All right. So just transfer the second one over to the next closest arm. Yes, ma'am. There are seven zombies remaining in the room. All right. That's now, when you said did 12 damage? Yeah. Okay. And that's it, because my other attack missed. Barth. All right. So we are going to take a uh, bonus action. Uh, second win. So I'm going to regain some hit points here. Nice. Uh, nine plus five, so I'm going to regain 14 hit points real quick. That'll help a little bit. Uh, two, 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 two. Uh, and we'll go ahead and take a swipe at the. I think, is there. There's not a one HP zombie near me anymore, right? Correct. All right, we'll just take a swing at the nearest one. Uh, lowest is an eight for a 14. Uh, so we're going to probably add a superiority die to this, uh, just cause we need to get some damage on these zombos. Uh, let's see. They're probably immune to fear. That seems like an easy thing. So I might as well trip one. We'll do the tripping attack. Uh, so add the D10. Where's my D10? There it is. Plus a D8. Ugh. Uh, so we got eight. So it's 11 damage and a strength 14, uh, saving throw. Uh, okay, it is knocked down. Nice. So my next attack will be a standard attack on that one uh, for a 16 to hit. hit. And we'll go ahead and do 10 damage. Again, if your attacks are not both or is not a one. <laughs> yep, I know. I just wanted to call out my numbers because I'm rolling pretty well tonight. Okay, uh, Bobo. All right, so I'm going to try to use my brilliant mind to create a five-foot-wide corridor 
in which I am going to blast a gigantic lightning bolt through these zombies and into the Fat Friar. Okay, so you move down along the southern wall. The Fat Friar is gone. You can't hit him. But there is that middle level um, cleric who's the one who attempted to command you. He is also going to be able to put in that line. You can hit three zombies in him. Yep, so I'll do that. The ones engaging Zena. And I will not hit my companions. Correct. Okay, let them have it. Lightning bolt. DC 14. Um, so two of the zombies dodged your lightning bolt, but the cl the uh, cultist and the third zombie do not. So how much damage do you do? 8d6. Let's see the pain. 25. Okay, so the zombie hit by the lightning bolt is dead. The cultist hit by the lightning bolt is dead. The other two zombies remain on their feet. They dodged. Yes. That's how I do it. Yeah. You'll just hear Zenon roar towards you. Snitches get stitches, Bobo. That's okay. right. Okay. Remember Tatiana. She'll touch on one of the zombies next to Sinon. Okay. That's a 12. Hits. Burn your eyeballs out, bitch. Seven. Okay. It's all up. It's still up. And then I'm going to use my seven spiders to do the same madness I've been doing for a while. Okay. Let me see. Roll. So... 21, 23, 10. Hit. My lowest is 10. All four of those will hit. So how much damage does the one that does 23 do? So. First one does how much damage? The first one will be plus 3, 5. Uh, he's still up. The second one is going to do the same five. Still up. The other one's going to do nine. Still up. The other one's going to do seven. Goes down. The other one's going to do nine. Uh, goes is injured. You're going to do another nine. Stays up. And the last one's going to be a five. It's a hit or does five damage? Th that's five damage total on the last one. Uh, I rolled them all. Uh, and now the cleric. Um, Isn't he dead now? Oh, yeah, he's dead. That's right. Yeah. I just yeah. didn't delete him from initiative. He is dead. You are correct. I blasted it. With the lightning bolt. Um, okay, so there are six zombies left. It is now split three and three. So the three against Zenon. Uh, one hits. And does six bludgeoning damage. The three on Varith. Uh, one hits. And does nine bludgeoning damage. Getting in deep in the gap of your armor and clawing a good chunk into you. Uh, Xenon, it's your turn. All right, so none of the ones around me are exceptionally damaged. Uh, two of them. So one near Varith is pretty damaged. One near you is pretty damaged by the lightning bolt, and then the other one got lightning bolted, but is not as, did not also get attacked by a bunch of spiders. All right, so the one with the most amount of damage make a dex save. Uh, what's the DC? Uh, I'm assuming it's higher than 10. Yes. Failed? All right, so he'll just take only one lightning damage this time. Uh, which would trigger his thing, but he passes it because he can't fail one DC one save. All right, 15 to hit for... Hits? 
seven, uh, nine damage. Still up. All right. 17 for 11 damage. Still up. Jesus Christ on a cracker. All right. And then 15 Hits. for another 13 damage this time. I <laughs> passed that one too. I'm sorry. Jesus. All right. Well, that's it. The undead, the undead menaces resist the full onslaught of Xenon. Uh, sh growl, growling in anger and defiance. Uh, it's Vareth's turn. Is one still uh, prone by me? Uh, yep, but it is not dead. Yep. I'll, I'll just go ahead and give that one a solid whack uh, for a not a one. Uh... And that'll be eight damage. Pass the save. Okay. Well, I mean, well, we got one more and a butt attack coming here. Uh, oh, that is a one. That's great. Uh, <laughs> so the butt attack on that one is a not a one to hit, uh, just for the D four. Uh, oh, that's seven damage. Oh, you got. Yeah, I got one. <laughs> In a rush of adrenaline, I'll use my, uh, uh, what is it called? Action surge to attack the next zombie and maybe, maybe do something. So this one's at disadvantage. Uh, no ones. So we're hitting it for seven damage. Okay. And that'll be it. Action surge gives you a full another action, so you have another attack left. We'll take it. Uh, not a one. Los was a three. And, uh, ooh, uh, 12 damage on that one. Okie dokie. Bobo. All right, so the monk has disappeared, huh? And so there's like four or five zombies left. Five zombies left, two of which are very severely injured. Uh, two All of right. the ones near... Uh, I'm going to hit one yeah. with a, a severely injured one with a firebolt. Okay. For 11. 11 hits? Uh, uh, I'm sorry. It hits 11 damage. It goes down. There you go. Who can? Ooh. Ooh, spider time. Oh. Um... <laughs> I'm gonna do shield touch first. Uh, shield touch for thirteen. Uh, the one that Martin was just hitting goes down. Woo! And then seven more crazy attacks. Okay, there's two zombies left. One hurt. One not hurt. So I'm gonna go three on four. Okay. Three, four, no, four first. That's 12, 8, 17, and crit. Uh, so the crit will finish off that one because it does not get the save against crits. And a. Two over tens and one natural one. So two attacks. Okay. How much damage? It'll be both are eight. Uh, he's down. There are no longer any Whoa. zombies. This room is empty. Yeah. Oh. I are do a, a big tree jump in midair. Yeah, like, yeah. All right, the first thing I'm going to do is eat those two good berries, and then I'm going to secondly go um, try to untie uh, Ares from the altar. Okay, Ares remains unconscious, but he is no longer tied to the altar. I give him a good berry. That last good berry? Yep, my, la my hey, last berry. Whoa, man. Last I remember, some kids were spinning me around on my shell. Xenon, where's Cain? Uh, Kane is no longer with us. 
Oh man, what happened? He got um he got uh he got got. We'll just put it. It was a work accident. Yeah. You guys look pretty beat up. Yeah, I will just point to the onslaught of dead zombies and things around us. Yeah, uh, a little. Um, are you all right? Uh, Luminary, being a wonderful friend to all of you, is going to cast enough spells to bring you all up to full health. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm going to ask him if he thinks he's in good enough condition to make it out of here safely while we go look for our other friend. He says, yeah, man, I think I'm fine. I don't see anybody. All right. I'm I'll like, Everybody that was trying to sacrifice me, it looks like they're dead. Good job, man. Yeah. The big one still lives. Mr. World, I'm going to peek my head out the door the way we came in to see if I can see anybody around. And then nope. I'll, I'll give um, one of my javelins, because I have a couple of them, too. Aries, because I'm sure he's weaponless, and I'll say head back to Free Chester. He says, and I'll also this give... place will be nice once once you finish clearing it out of bad guys. Yeah, I'm gonna give him a couple of gold for something to eat, drink, and sleep, and then also a weapon and tell him to head back. He says, I I'm away here. If you need help, come back here. I'll come out make sure you're safe. He's gonna stay. Yeah, man. What's wrong with you? I mean, this it's is a, a swap. nice place. Look at it. It's evil, but I can fix it. It's oh a swap. God. I mean, he likes it. He's a turtle. I mean, of course yeah, he likes a swap. There's blood everywhere. All right. Well, I'm going to take my gold and my weapon back and say, fine. He says, now the weapon could be helpful. There's some bad stuff out here. Fine, but I'm keeping my gold. Yeah. I like this he place. Says, the first thing I got to do is obviously destroy this heretic altar. Yeah. But they have some more people imprisoned by me. You should go look for them. Yeah, hey, speaking of, did you by chance when you were tied up meet a, a cleric, uh, another cleric, his name I think is Umbra, right, uh, Vera? Umbra's yeah. name, right? There was like this guy with antlers, man, but I thought that was just the drugs I did. No, 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 that's our friend. Where? How do we, uh, where is that from here? I don't know, he was, he was in a cell near me. I think it was in the basement, man. In the basement. Okay. It's okay. right here. It's right here. He's just underneath of us. It's where the fat fryer is. And we're going to go down there. We're going to fry him. <coughs> you know what? I do like bacon. I don't like fryer bacon. Ugh. No, we're going to fry him. <laughs> Frogs right. are a delicacy where I come from. I mean, if I could, I would just... No, I guess that wouldn't be good. I was going to say if I could just put a poison cloud, just fill the entire airspace down there with a poison that's sunk into the underground. I mean, what a wonderful spell that would be. Um, I like it if he's moldy. He'd be taste good, but fried. Um, but, but no, I mean, I mean, we would kill Umbra if I was it to do that. <laughs> yeah, that's horrible. Yeah, that's not good. Yeah, okay. So, yeah. Okay, Lumen. Hey, thanks for the heels, bud. Glad to see you're okay. Sorry you yeah, got Yeah, Lumen. Hey, you know, you remember that situation we were going to handle when uh, when we got split up? Uh, he who shall not be named, <laughs> Frogger. Yeah, uh, he's still out and about, so be careful. Don't know if he's coming. Oh, hey, let me ask you a question. Uh, hey, Lumen, Aries, um, I got a favor to ask of you. Now, you're an aquatic creature. You'll probably hold your breath for, like, I'm thinking at least 15 minutes underwater. Okay, so my idea is here that here it is, Lumen. And, uh, like, if you would do this for me, it'd be a super helpful. I want you to swim around under the water all around this other tower that's next to here. Because there's a building that's next to here that's unopened. It has two towers and a dock. And I think it, if you just come and just like swim around there and just use your turtle abilities. Cowabunga. Just, yeah, just cowabunga, man. Just try to get under there and see if there's a hidden entrance. Please. Please. He says, I can look, man. Just give me a second. Let me catch my breath. I was yeah. about to be sacrificed two minutes ago. 
I mean, are you hungry or anything? You need a snacky? He says, I, I'll find something in the water. I do have maybe some long leaf in my bag still. I got some vials of some liquid. <laughs> well, let's not. Uh, well, hell no. Let's not get too hazy. You, you made me drink pee. No. <laughs> no, I'm like, well, Lumen, are you sure you wouldn't just want to come with us? Instead of just hanging out here, I mean, you were going to join the the our company, the Golden Company, anyway, and I have the Golden Vial right here, so you could join right now. He says, "No, man, I don't want to drink those vials, man." Oh, uh, that's not required. Listen, you should go find find his friend, man. Who knows what that. they're going to do to him? He was small, man. Like he was small, big, and he holds his feet like a foot and a half apart. He's like That's small, it. man. Yeah, let's go find him. Yeah, let's go get him. Let's go get him, guys. We're in the move. Well, thank you, Lumen. We'll never forget you or your former player. I will tell him he lost a lie as I turn around to leave. With my okay. friends to the basement. Dun, dun, dun. Chon, chon, chon. Dun, dun, dun. Okay, so where do you go now? Uh, where did the... We're using turtle instructions to go to the path. He, just, he just thinks that he, he was stored underground. He doesn't know the way. Where did the big one go? Out the door to the south. Let's look that way. See where it is. See where it goes. Okay. Track uh, the it. next room Check. is a uh, cold and stale corridor. You can see, obviously, the footprints of the zombies that press through it. On the east side of the wall, there's an old wooden carving of a hooded priest that's super old. It's mostly worm-eaten. Um, but the... Uh, room is otherwise empty except for some spider webs hanging from the ceiling. There is a door on the southern wall. However, that door is locked. <laughs> we know how to open locked doors. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let me take a look out of here. Uh, okay, fine. Uh, the boring way. All right, so what? how do you do this investigation? Um, to open a door, you would make a thieves tool check. Oh no! Never mind. I don't have that. You should have a set of these tools. Really? We have canes. Is he proficient with them? I'm not proficient with them. Yeah. You don't have to be proficient to use it. You just yeah, but you, have, add, but your, you add your proficiency to use them. It's better. I cast guidance on him. Yeah. You just lose your proficiency bonus if you're not proficient. You can still use them. Okay, give me a dexterity check for these thieves. Plus one d four with guidance. All right, so you guys want me to do this? I have a plus three dexterity. It's pretty good. I got you, my friend. Okay, here it is. Oh, plus one d four. Uh, you pop the lock. So when you attempt to open the door, it is apparently barred from the other side. Uh, I'll step forward then with a swift kick to the door. I help you kick. Yeah, same. Double kick. Uh, so Xenon kicks the door, uh, and you open the door into a room um, where rich carpets cover the floor and precious tapestries are uh, hanging on the wall depicting various holy things and most impressively a giant icon of the frog god. Think uh, everything. Mm. Out by the soul window is a small reading stand. Uh, you see a brazier filled with hot coal standing by the north wall that is next to two bookshelves which are full of folios, codices, and scroll cases. Take uh, everything. A lantern sort of dangling from a hook near the ceiling. It's shedding a soft light. Um, but the room is otherwise empty. Oh, I don't want to take anything yet because Aries and maybe some other clerics might make more use of this. Oh. 
we can take it and then give you it not to them. If any other it. doors in this room, right. and the window is shut. It's not the way to go then. Nope. <clears throat> There's treasures in here for sure. Yeah, I'm broke. <laughs> this looks like a money pit. Let's take well, these fine rugs out of here for sure. Well, we can't really carry all of that stuff while we're on a rescue mission. We can come back and get That's it. That's true. That's true. We'll come back for it. Yeah. <laughs> Books. Yeah, you're right. You're right. I just got greedy there. Yeah. I did a bobo. Is there something, uh, maybe a couple of small shiny trinkets laying around? Uh, there is not. The things in this room that would appear to be valuable is the vast library. Books. Okay, yeah. I was just gonna pick ooh, some. Ooh. Can I can can I scan the books? Can I scan uh, these the are books? books on a lot of mundane um sort of there's books on herbalism and metallurgy and alchemy, some religious philosophy books. Okay. Yeah, we know that. Um, there's occasional works on geometry and construction. It's the you know ordinary sort of like well learned man's library, but okay. quite vast for a personal library. Pretty good, pretty good. Okay, I respect that. Right. That big guy had to go somewhere. Can somebody investigate the frog statue to find well, some kind of secret exit or trap door no, or something? He he ran out the south door, and uh, that. we had to track. We could just track him where he's going. I I imagine he's just gone simply you don't to the see other sides of where he went in this room with that check. Scene. No, I'm gonna look. I'm gonna go back out to the room we were in, and then look out the door he went out and see if I could track him. So the him. door he went out was into the room where the spider webs are, and then continuing south, the only way you could have gone is into this bedroom. Into the spider webs? Like you went through a very small like ante room to this bedroom. Oh, so there's um, yes. And then there's a bedroom, and there's no other doors that he could have gone. Got to be a teleport system in here somewhere. Bobo, remember when we were in Rapan and we uh, touched the symbol on the wall and it transferred us from one room to another? I bet there's something sneaky like that in here. Uh, it was very well could be. Because if he came in this door and barred the door shut, means he got out of here somehow. So one, he's hiding. Two, he teleported out with magic. I mean, he could have used a simple Misty Step spell. Do you, uh, you're pretty good with magic. Are you able to detect when other people have been using it? I can. Uh, at this point right now, I don't have that ability to uh, zone in on that. Oof. Okay. I mean, I, honestly, we have to actually, uh, I think we actually have to think that we're going to have to go to the other buildings. Uh, we're going to have to go into the tower building because that is where obviously this friar uh, has well, gone. Can you remember that there was another hallway off of the room um, where you first came in that you haven't gone down at all? Ooh. All right. Well, let's go that way. Mm -hmm. The spider gang is coming. Okay, so you go to that room, and quickly a staircase going down is to your left. All right. We Send follow? the spiders. Send the spiders first. Yeah, the spiders are walking on the ceiling as we walk on the floor. And I'm last. Uh, it has been, I think, summon, summon has a time limit, and... Looking yes, he does. The other room says eaten. It has one hour. I don't think it's been an hour. hour. It has not taken an hour for you to look through this room. Yeah, my my form goes back to normal because my form is ten yeah. minutes, so your I don't have any more time right here. Please. Your form is done. The spiders are not gone yet. Uh, you move down the stairs, and there's a hallway to your left. It looks like it's going into um, a sort of laboratory-ish area. It probably clearly was once a like a secondary room for worshiping maybe for like higher level people only, but now it's been twisted into a dark laboratory. You can see that it's well lit. It looks like somebody was there and was interrupted during some experiments. Um, you see a corpse on the table that does not look, Vareth, like your friend um, Umbra. And then to the north, you see a hallway 
um, that is about 40 feet long and turns right, but there are four doors, two on each side, about 10 feet apart, about halfway down. I'm going to decapitate that corpse real quick, considering we just fought like a dozen zombies, <laughs> and move off to those doors. Okay. Maybe call, call out for your friend. Call out for Umbra. Umbra! And when you call out for Umbra is when we will stop the session for today, since Umbra had to go. <laughs>